Welcome, welcome to the Oblast Brainstorming. My name is Chris Johnson. And these uh, on this panel, if you're a guest or a founder, welcome, welcome. I want to change things up a little bit. Um, I started this off one way, and I think it, it kind of twirled out of control there. And I want to explain why. We had two amazing uh, companies that came on uh, to talk to us about infrastructure, which I fell in love with, and also the well, we water company, which I fell in love with. Okay. My big thing here is my biggest fear was uh, cross promoting and stuff like that. You all understand that. But what we're doing is we're introducing, we are introducing companies to a bless. We're not necessarily in introducing companies to Unpassive. We want them to know what Obless is and how they can help us. So we kind of went crazy on it. We had everyone's got all these wonderful ideas. And I did a lot of studying over the last four or five days and found out a lot of these ideas are absolutely phenomenal. But because of laws and codes and rules, some of these things can't even be done, which is a shame. Uh, uh, for instance, tiny houses, which to me is amazing. There's got to be certain uh, house sizes that can only build. And so there's only a few cities or states that actually allow this to happen. Now, in other countries, I'm, I don't think it'll be a problem. So what I want to do is explain real quick on th that structure. I already know through Feline what she can do, and I'm still blown away by that. I already know what the other gentleman has with the water company. I'm totally blown away by that. But the main thing is we're getting off track. We're building a city. Uh, we want to start with homelessness. And another thing, we had a wonderful gentleman on here. You might be on here tonight named Mark. And he was... Uh, to me, he was an amazing person to actually come on here and talk about it. I ask that you respect anyone that comes on as a guest and talks. I think he blew us all away. And uh, as you all know, he is a founder. He's also has a team. So I'm amazed by that. So anyone that we bring on here, whether they're, they are homeless or they have an illness, let's show respect and uh, give them a, you know, a kudos to, for doing what they're doing. Because what they're doing is they're educating us. So what I wanted to do is get back on track with why we really started. Listen, I'm very excited that we are going to launch in Passive. But the excitement for me is Obless, starting these projects off. Now, people are still sending me projects as we speak. And uh, they're amazing. Don't stop. Julie Wine has got a link that puts, uh, I think she's still there, in the back office, your name your occupation, what you do. What I'm looking for now, and I'm gonna start out with Joy Six, not just yet. Joy Six had a lady that was uh, could not make it. So I know we'll get her on another time, who actually deals with homelessness. What I wanna do is educate not only myself, but all of us on what they deal with on a daily basis. There's many reasons why people are homeless, okay? And I also know there's people on this panel. See, what I'm looking for is, right now is professionals that's gonna educate us. I know a lot of you do a lot of wonderful things for uh, people all over the world. And I want you to keep doing them. But right now we all need to be educated on the handle people and uh, uh, you know understand what they're going through. So we understand it. This way, when we go to help these individuals, we all know to be respectful, compassionate, uh, not never judgmental, for anybody because every situation is different. I also talked to Nancy. I know I have some PNGers on here tonight, which I love. I uh, had a little texting conversation with Nancy. I would like to get the PNG, Veronica, Nancy, um, David, and they're going to explain to you their structure, what they are doing in PNG, because that's what we're missing here. Yep, we're building a city, but we have to have that structure first. And because of the laws, legalities, rules, my God, governments and every government's different. We all have to understand that. So I, what I ask you all to do, no matter where you come from, check out your country's rules, your laws. Uh, if you know a lawyer in that country, you could talk to, because I want you completely to understand uh, what a bless is gonna do, but we have to do it right. Ash Mafara doesn't do anything wrong, all right? Remember, we're representing the greatest company in the world, the most giving company in the world. We want to make sure, especially me, 
I don't want to make a mistake. I'm not perfect in any ways, never have been, never will be. But for this, you darn well tootin', I want to be perfect about it. I don't want to miss a beat. I don't want to miss a rule. I want to abide every law. And if we can't build tiny houses in an area in Michigan, well, I'm going to build bigger ones then. That's my attitude. It's not going to stop me from doing what needs to be done. All right. We do have other organizations. Uh, I was talking with Marty, Robin, and Julie last night about, and I won't say their names, other organizations that help people. But we also find out that the people that run these organizations are getting anywhere from two hundred to to eight hundred thousand dollars salary to do this. That's not what we do in Impassive. Nobody is here to line their pockets except through Impassive and what it's going to offer to us. But when we go out and help people, it's about helping people. All right. So if you have the mindset as I'm going to make some money off these people, no. I want you to give with your heart. All right. That that's when you're truly going to feel what Obless is all about. So tonight, and Joy Six is going to fill in and let us uh, educate us a little bit. But I also, if you're on here and you're a, a professional in any means that you're dealing with homelessness, even a story to let us understand this because I want us all to understand. So Joyce is going to start us off. Joy Six, I appreciate you. I know we'll get your friend on here again. And uh, everyone on here, sit back, enjoy, and be ready for an education. But we will continue the ideas because, like I said, everyone, everyone's going to have a voice and a bless. One more thing, Joyce, because I'm on a platform here again. I can't get off it. Remember this. Oh, bless is going to hit a scale bigger than any, any company in the world to help people. But remember this. Each one of you have teams or people that you got into this. Your own little family, we'll call them. Each one of you can do your own Oh, bless projects also. All right. We're talking about when a tsunami comes in and wipes out a whole, a whole area. That's where Obless is going to be big help scale wise. But man, you might have neighbor that just their house burned down. You might have a family member that just lost all their siblings. That's what I'm talking about. Everyone can do this. So Joyce, on that note, I'd like to introduce my beautiful sister from Michigan, Joyce Six, Educate Away, young lady. Thank you. Hello, Chris. Hi, Narelle. Hello, everyone. Um, that was my friend calling me right now. So she was returning my phone call. <laughs> of course, <laughs> she was in a meeting and she couldn't get out. So um, I am not Katrina, but I can you know, give you some of the things that I've, I've experienced and gone through as, as, as a social worker working in a community mental health and working in a um, Center for Family Health, a medical center as well, um, a federally qualified medical center, which um, opens the door to healthcare for all. So um, as a social worker, um, we encounter so many things with people um, and their um, and issues with homelessness, whether it's poverty, whether it's um, you know, domestic violence or whatever issues that are that present. So one thing um, I just want to say about homelessness is that, you know, no one ever woke up one morning and said, I think I'll be homeless today, or um, I think I just, you know, live on the street. Um, a lot of people, I mean, even people that we eat, that we encounter every day are just one paycheck away from being homeless. You know, it's like one paycheck or one step away from being homeless. And um, homelessness is, in general, it's not can't put it all in one one ball and say, we're going to um, help everyone that's homeless a certain type of way, because each person is an individual. And so each person got to that place um, for some reason, whether it was, um, you know, whether it was being um, in domestic violence, whether it was drugs, whether it was um, losing a job, mental illness. So there's so many, um, there's so many reasons um, as Chris said earlier, for people being homeless and those reasons vary. So we have to treat each person like an individual and we have to go into communities. So each community is going to be different. Each country is going to be different and it's going to be um, addressing each person as an individual, each community and each country uh, for what issues that you face in that country. So as, as we look at homelessness, 
we look at the individual and then we go into the communities and we have to talk to each person, talk to the people, find out what the person is in need of, find out the reason that they ended up homeless. Um, because if we put everyone in one box, we will not be able to touch that. We're going to encounter so many issues that people are dealing with um, as home, you know, for the reasons for them being homeless. So we have to look at the whole person and address that person as a whole person. We look at the spiritual, the mental, the, the physical, um, the emotional. So there's so many areas of a person that we have to look at and we find out why that person ended up homeless. And then we begin to talk to them and, and address that, that issue. Um, some people are there because, you know, like you say, if they're out there, they're mental, some mental illness that they're suffering with, they're um, having, they have medical issues. Maybe they ran away, maybe it was through sex trafficking. Maybe it was domestic violence. Maybe they were pregnant and they got put out of their home or um, someone lost their job. So there are so many areas of homelessness that has to be addressed, uh, addressed when we look at it. And then um, when we also talk about homelessness, um, you know, people are living on the streets. They're living from, from friends and family's home to family's home. They're living on couches. They're finding places anywhere that they can be to try and get shelter. And, you know, like I said, they're not there by choice. And so as we look at homelessness, we're going to encounter like um, issues that people have. It's like they can't meet their basic needs. So if you can't meet your basic needs, you know, you're not thinking about um, the next thing. You're thinking about how am I going to eat? Where am I going to sleep? You know, we're, and you think of a family out there, a mother with children, you know, she's thinking about her children, where are they going to sleep? What are, you know, what, how are they going to eat? How am I going to keep them safe? So there's so many issues that, that deals with um, homelessness. And if that person is, is there and we go to them as, as one unit and we say, well, you're homeless because of this way. We can't judge people. And I know no one here is like judging. So we, we can't judge. We have to be always have an open mind and always be ready to step in where we can and to meet them where they are. If we can begin to meet people where they are and address that address that person one person at a time, we'll be able to change the masses. Um, we'll be up against, you know, um, drug drug use will be up against mental health will be up against people needing um they don't have the resources they don't have internet they may have a cell phone they may have a doctor's appointment but they can't meet that because you know they don't have the means to get there they don't have transportation um so there's so many barriers that keeps a person from getting to that basic need and it, they end up back in that on a hamster's wheel running around and round in circles so um, but whatever we can do, and I know Bless is, is there just to help um, in any way that you know we can. So whatever we can do, one person at a time, to address that person as an individual, where they are, uh, what they need, and um, you know, as a whole person. So if once we're looking at that, we're up against the you know, governments and so many other things, so many other um, entities that's out there and agencies that are out there that are willing to help but they don't have the solution either. So it's like, if we, we give a man a fish, they'll eat for a day, but if we teach them to fish, we can help them for a lifetime and we can help to alleviate and to um, solve some of the issues with homelessness. So um, anyone that has anything else to add in there, this is just some of the things that I've encountered, You know, people that just don't have the means and the resources to get to the places or the things that they need. Um, so that's kind of all I have right now, Chris. And um, you know, anyone that has questions, if I can answer them, but there's so many other people that have more experiences than I do as well. So they'll be able to jump in and, you know, help as well. Wonderful, Joyce. Thank you. Thank you. You guys, um, I'm not going to repeat everything she just said, because I, she just said it all perfectly. We understand that <clears throat> we do have a lot of things to fix. And I, one of the most important things is, as, as Ash said, once we get into that little city or that little village or that little house, when they go out the back door, but there's also checkups. Okay, how do we find a person if they're homeless? All right, that, that's where a bless is gonna come in, come in. One of my goals is to make sure when that person gets through that door, that end door, that they got a place to stay and set themselves up and we're gonna help them with that. Very, very important. Joyce, how would you deal, real quick, just one question. I know that this always isn't part of everything you do, but. Let's say that we do come across an individual um, 
lost a family member and just lost everything in life, what is the first step that you would have to do to deal with that individual to help them? So if they lost everything or lost a family member, I mean, you would, same thing, you would go in and do an assessment. You would talk to that person and find out um, what they need right at this moment. So you're going to look at what they need right now versus trying to help them for down the line for, you know, um, you know, years or months out, but you'll look at what they need right now and try to get them if they lost everything, you know, find out what they need, get them um, if they need housing, if they need food, they need shelter, they may need clothing, um, get them into grief counseling. And also with that too, I didn't say that with homelessness, get people into counseling, get them the help that they need. So if you, like you said, if they um, check ups and check ins, if, if they, if we are supplying them with the homes and jobs and all those things, but they go out that door and there's no resources or no, or no counseling or um, medical or whatever else that they need to set up, they're going to end up back on that hamster wheel again. So I would definitely, you know, do the assessment, find out what they need, get them into, get the basic needs met first, and then get them into counseling, grief, whatever they will need to, you know, help for. Um, Because remember, grief also, it's not even if it's the loss or the death of a family member, it's a loss of resources, a loss of a job, it's a loss of a family, it could be a divorce, it could be domestic violence. So there's so many things that um, go along with grief. So grief is not just losing a loved one. It's just losing something that's dear to you or something that you, you know, losing your home. So a lot of that falls in there too. Thank you, Joyce. Now, I know we have two hands. Does anyone have any questions uh, before I talk to Dr. and David uh, to ask Joyce of anything, anything you want? She is a uh, qualified professional social worker. So as you think of them, Joyce is going to be here for us for a little bit. And if they come up, let us know. Joyce, thank you. I will go on to Dr. Masagio. Please unmute yourself. What do you have, please? Yeah, hello, everyone. Thank you so much, Joyce, for, for sharing. Uh, sorry, it's in the middle of the night, so I'm not showing my camera tonight. Actually, actually, it's in the morning here in Norway. So... I really like what you said because that's exactly what uh, social workers do. I'm a social worker and I will share more uh, my story and experience from Botswana because that's where I practiced a lot as a social worker. Um, in Botswana, because uh, Chris Johnson said we could share about countries and what's happening in countries, uh, the social workers who work for government, government social workers are the ones who do rapid assessment for any case, for any case. So we could use um, government social workers to assess homeless people. And homelessness may not necessarily mean people are living in the streets, just like Joyce said, it's, it's every case is unique. And every case has to be assessed according to its own uniqueness because there are many reasons why people are, are homeless. So I worked as a, a private practitioner, but whoever I was helping, I was always getting information from the government social workers because they have details of every case regarding needs within the communities. So I would, as OBLES, enter through the government social workers to say, uh, I would like to help this way. And I'm thinking I have resources uh, so much. Uh, could you do a rapid assessment for us? As long as they know that there is going to be help for the community or there's going to be support for their clients, they will go out and do that type of assessment or they would already present the cases to you. Now, uh, commonly in Botswana, most of the people who, who are homeless or would you say have, have no home, they, they may not necessarily be living in the street, but they, maybe they have very uh, uncomfortable little homes, no heating system, no, uh, no bed, uh, sleeping. I mean, I've had children sleeping in crawls, if you know what I mean, like with, with goats uh, out in the outdoor because they, they had nothing. Um, so they would do that and they would give you uh, the record. So uh, 
and again, of, of, often children in Botswana, for example, would would be having no homes because sometimes when parents die, people take over their inheritance uh, and ra- relatives can take over, uh, over the inheritance and run away with it. So the children will lose the home, the home has been sold, the children will lose uh, all other things that are basic needs. That's why I like what Joyce said to say, grief and loss is not only about losing the loved one, it's also multiple loss types of losses as well. So almost, almost every homeless person needs therapy. So as a private practitioner in Botswana, what I do, the way I work with the social workers is I enter in with my grief therapy skills. I have not been building houses for for homeless people, but I have been targeting orphan children and giving them grief therapy. And there are they are so many, or they were so many when we started actually the, this particular program. So what we do is we gather them together because we follow the culture of the community. We gather them together, talk to them, especially as age mates who are orphan children. And then we take them away into a campsite where it's like a life skill school training. So we give them life skills there, but we also get address their grief because many of them have lost their children, their, their parents because of HIV AIDS. Many of them are experiencing these multiple losses of lack of inheritance because uh, relatives have, have taken away such. Uh, many of them are not effective in their education because they are just traumatized and they are, they are thinking about other issues. Uh, so they have common issues among them. So we have got this class of, um, would you say, you can call them homeless, but we could say we have got this class of grieving adolescents who are experiencing problems in kind of similar ways. So then we group them together, take them to the campsite. Uh, There can be 30 of them, there can be 40 of them, there can be 200 of them, but we divide them into groups. And then they are attended by specific trained social workers and psychologists to give them this, we call it grief therapy, but it covers a lot of other issues because they have got multiple other losses. These children also may be experiencing abuse of some kind because of their vulnerability. Some of them are, because they have lost their parents, then they are unsafe. Relatives who take them in may be even abusing them sexually. So they are experiencing sexual abuse. They are experiencing stigma from the community. They are having educational challenges. They are, ha- they are experiencing poverty. There's loss after loss after loss after loss. It takes time to listen to their story. And normally when you deal with a group, it's more efficient because they empathize There are people who are experiencing similar issues. So it is easier to address a group than to address individuals. But I would say, if you do the kind of approach that I'm doing, then gather those that are experiencing similar challenges together to offer them this kind of grief therapy. While at the same time, obviously homelessness, you will be uh, providing basic needs like houses, like food, like water, uh, those kind of things Botswana government tries to give, but it's very, very minimal. So that's why also Oblast can, can come in. Because as I said, assessing what they need will be defined mostly by the social worker. But addressing their mental health, I would recommend dealing with them in groups according to their similarities, you know. Who are they? What kind of problem have they experienced? And so on and so forth. And what we do is we normally, when we take these kids, we take them from one community. Uh, So when they are out there in the wilderness, in a campsite, because we use a campsite, then they are building a kinship 
together. We strengthen them to work together as a, as a kinship of age mates and to help one another when they get back home. So they, they get back home as one powerful unit. And because of the culture within Botswana, uh, before we even take them away, the, the whole community knows we are addressing this particular problem. So when they get back home as a strengthened kinship, then key stakeholders in the community, like the chief, uh, the social workers, the teachers, people who are concerned about these young people's well-being, they gather together to welcome them, to motivate them, and to say to them, here we are, our services are also open, you can come and ask for help. So we are partnering with other stakeholders, we are just not uh, enough alone. Right. So then these young people relax. They know that, OK, there are many other offices open for us because some of them don't even know that they need that. Kind. There are such kind of services around them. So then they continue, whether they are in school or wherever, but we continue having small meetings with them in between to strengthen them, to say, how are you doing, to visit them case by case. But the beauty is because we started with them as a group, we almost know every case now. We almost know everybody's mental health challenges. We almost know everybody's uh, pathway towards success, what they would like to do. So then OBLAS would step in maybe with uh, resources like houses, la la la, but also this mental health part and partnering with stakeholders at the same time. But I would say to start with, uh, talk to the social workers, uh, I think in most countries you would do that because they would offer free public service to do that kind of rapid assessment for you. And then you partner with them because OBLES is not government to, to, to then map the type of services. But the type of services on mental health, group work is more efficient and quicker. And people love supporting each other. So if you work with them as a group, they will support each other. You just have to do it according to the context in such a way that uh, what works in Botswana may not necessarily work in, in Michigan, for example. But uh, almost all over, maybe you just can pick me up, group work is, is very efficient. People empathize and people become resources to one another. People check on each other, even if you are not there as a professional or as obless, they keep updating uh, the key officer. Oh, so and so, maybe, it has now lost another child or so-and-so, their house has bent down. They take care of each other. They are watchdogs to one another. Thank you. Wow. Well, doctor, uh, wow. Hey, doctor and Joyce, uh, I'm going to ask you to do me a favor. I would like for you guys to start kind of like a committee of social workers through Unpassive, I would love if you, you guys discuss things, how you can help things, because I think that's what we need. Not, now we're talking structure. You just found out why we just can't throw money over there. All right, very, very good. So anyone that is a social worker on here or deals with that, please let's uh, you know take their names down. I'll do my best to get emails send it your way so you guys can start talking and get this going. As the doctor said, man and Joyce, there's many different things out there. It's most important to understand, but the most important is let's hear their story. Doctor, I appreciate that. Thank you very much. I hope you contact Joyce and whoever else we get on here. I do appreciate what you just said. Thank you. Yes, I'll send my contacts to Joyce right away. Thank you. Wonderful. Wonderful. Okay, so we have now my brother, David Rodleski, I know I've seen many of the things that he wants to do. Uh, Dave, go ahead and meet yourself. Let's hear what you got, my brother. Hey, how you doing? Um, well, for the last 30 plus years, I've been interested in helping the disabled because, well, I was doing construction. I could have become one, and one of my best friends was missing his legs. Um, long story short, you know, I've been kind of dedicating everything I wanted to do towards that. Then I got into OPAS on passive and it was all me, 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 you know, trying to survive. I saw what was going on and I evolved. I realized, well, I'm not going to need anything. I wanted to start helping. 
Chris started the angels and started. So I started thinking about the homeless and I was like, well, you know, we got the state the state sucks. You know, they give you a place with a lot of rules and problems and headaches. And they basically just kick you out in the morning and you got to be back by a certain time. And they're not giving you a whole lot of great help. Well, you know, I figure what do people need? Yeah. You need shelter. You need food. You need water. You need work. You need all kinds of stuff. And then I had a, I was watching, uh, I forget what I was watching is irrelevant. Um, and this commercial came on about digital real estate. And they were talking about how these malls all over the country and now all over the world are becoming empty. And, you know, nothing's going on with them. And they're sitting and I was thinking we could make a nice little center out of that, you know, because you need housing. You need a lot of different kind of housing. You need men's housing, women's housing. You got teens, you got military, you got drugs and, you know, people with, you know, psychological issues, you know, and everybody needs their own little place. You know, you can easily turn the, the uh, food court into a cafeteria. Um, you know, you can turn like an Apple store into a little computer center because, you know, if you're going to get a job, what do you need? Nowadays, you can't get a job without a phone. You can't get a job without an Internet connection. So I was thinking maybe we get in touch with some of the phone companies about getting some of these little prepaid burner phones. That way, as people come in, we have a phone we can give them. Maybe we'll activate it for the first month or two to get them going. We can give them a computer area so that they can check their email, let their families know they're alive and do some job hunting. You know, if you want to do some recreation, you know, there's probably an old video game store down the hall somewhere we can turn into a recreational area for the kids and people who want to spend their time. Uh, you know, you, what else do you need to get to work? You need clothes. We could start our own kind of goodwill sort of place, you know, collect all this stuff, hang up all the good stuff. And as people are coming through, if you need clothes for your job, yeah, you walk in. Go pick it off the shelf. If it fits and it works for what you need, take it. Whatever's no good, you know, we can put in another bin. I mean, I'm sure we can find lots of people who were seamstresses and tailors and things like that. We could take that and repurpose that into things for people, things to sell. We could start, you know, using some of the people to volunteer their time that are coming into the shelters. We could, uh, you know, start doing some hay bale farming up on top of the, the um, parking lot. We could rip up a bunch of sections of parking lot, build some greenhouses, or just do some open farming. Um, we can get some vehicles to get people back and forth to their new jobs. Um, I already started a, an LLC to try to help start doing all this stuff. One of the things I want to do is start getting some properties so that as people are starting to get on their feet, one, we can give them jobs repurp, you know, to fix up these homes for people. And then two, we can do low income housing for people, you know, as they're starting to get on their feet, you need a place to go, but you can't afford these, you know, tremendous rents. Well, you know, we'll fix them up. We'll give it to them for, you know, cost so they can get on their feet or, you know, half a cost and we'll supplement them. And as they progress and get better, they can move on to another place, their own place, and open it up for the next person to come in. Um, I mean, I've just got all kinds of, like we can have, you turn, you know, we can set up little medical and, you know, psychological facilities. So not psychological, probably the worst word to use. Um, people, you know, to get the help that, um, you know, we were just talking about a little while ago. We can have job placement centers. You know, we can have people that are, you know, just want to donate their time. We can get everybody, you know, a reseller position, give them a, uh, give them an income, permanent income. And in return, we ask them, maybe give us a year of your time, you know, like figure 40 hours a week for a year, just donate your time. And if you like us at the end of that, you stay. If not, you walk away, have a nice day. You, you got your life and you got your stuff in order. But if not, you know, it's like Ash is looking for people that are like minded and motivated. So if we can get people that are interested in staying, well, they're going to be real good people to work with. You know, plus they're going to know where all these homeless people are so we could find them and actually get them help. Um, not used to talking in front of a lot of people. Excuse me if I sound a lot nervous. Um, yeah, food, you know, and I figured as far as creating more jobs, we've got all these farmers that have been put out of 
you know, out of work by big farming. You know, Bill Gates is buying all the farmland. China's buying all the farmland. Well, let's buy small pods and stay small under the radar so we don't alert big pharma and big everybody. I mean, big farming and everything and start trouble. So they start attacking us. Let's get these farmers going with their own farms again, get them back to producing for their families. We can give them guaranteed income every year. And instead of like the government paying people not to grow on their farm on their land, well, grow, grow all you can and we'll take it. We'll pay you and we'll take it at the end of the year. We'll bring it to our homeless shelters. We can do soup kitchens. We can pack lunches for people going to work. And before things start going bad, we can start freeze drying it like preppers do for, you know, packing stuff up. We can, you know, supplement our efforts selling that stuff to preppers, you know, some good fresh food, you know, it'll be non GMO. It'll be all natural. We'll do it organic without having to go get certified organic and pay all that. We'll just do it. You know, give people good food, you know, like we had back in the 70s. I mean, the food we eat now, it's not like it was. <laughs> hey, David, I can see you got a lot of ideas. I know you sent me a lot. I appreciate you for coming on here. And uh, don't be scared, brother. You're doing fine. I appreciate you, man. Thanks. Yeah, I mean, I just got, I mean, I could sit here and talk all night. I literally have an entire notebook full of stuff that I've been talking about. You know, I've got... For, for this, I've got desalinization plants that I designed that I'm trying to design that's going to grow food, wa you know, fresh water. It's going to, you know, do a whole lot of stuff. You know, I mean, like the housing, those small houses we were talking about uh, two weeks ago. Awesome. We can go into other areas like desert areas as long as places are getting, you know, two to four inches of rain a year. We can build earth ships. You know, we got tires all over the place. We can build earth ships right in the ground. You can collect your own water, you can grow your own food and create an oasis in the middle of a desert area. You get enough of those together, you can have a nice green area in the neighborhood before you know it. Maybe you'll have some good water, good weather coming back and start hydrating the area. You know, we could, we could start, you know, refurbing the planet as we go, turn, you know, expand the green areas into the deserts. Wow, oh, David. Let me now, now listen, guys. I'm trying to make connections here. Now you could hear David. I've seen him. He's written to me multiple times telling me about his wonderful ideas. If you can relate to David, and maybe I can see I see Gene's going, yeah, wow, rock on. I want you guys to connect with each other through emails and start discussing this, how you're gonna structure it, what you're gonna do. So, Gene, write down David's name. David, you get Gene's name. You can put it private in the chat. Pass your email, said, let's get this structure going. So, David, I appreciate you. Thank you for coming on here. And uh, anyone else that wants to connect, if, if something's one, relating to you that someone's saying, man, get with those more. people. Go ahead, David. Yeah, just one more thing, if I can, real quick. I mean, I just love everybody's ideas. We've got a lot of really intelligent, motivated people here, and I'm loving it. And we're all about to have a bucket load of apples. So we're going to be able to do a whole lot of stuff. But I think if everybody just concentrates in your own little area and master it, come up with a nice little template that we can upload into, you know, on passive or the angel site somewhere so we could share it everywhere. Everybody can grab a, you know, an idea that works, take it and customize it to your specific area. Cause it's, you know, like McDonald's, you can go to Japan and get, get spaghetti or you can go someplace else and get shrimp or you go to Hawaii and you can get spam. You know, you got to, adjust everything for your specific area so it works better but i think if we all do this and start throwing into a nice big pool i think we can really really get a lock on this stuff i think we're going to do good and the, I'll, sh I'll shut up now no you're okay dave one of the things that julia actually put together is it's in updates you got to scroll down and look for it and what it does it puts all your qualifications a whole bunch of stuff so get in the back office, go on updates. You're going to have to scroll a little bit and find it and fill out those forms. Okay. Uh, eventually, we're going to start combining people together on their ideas, same similarities, whether you're a, a social worker or you're, you're, you're a, a visionary of, of things for helping people. That's the whole goal here, building the structure. David, I appreciate you. I know Gene is probably already typing away your name somewhere. So thank you very <laughs> much, brother. 
And I got to, I want to put together a think tank too, so that we can start working on this, get all kinds of ideas and start brainstorming together on a regular basis, you know? Okay. Absolutely. David, that's your job. You're hired. Get that think tank going. I'll take it. I'll take it. I already got the MLC. I'm motivated, dude. I'm Matter of fact, together. you and Gene look like you're just like, uh, I just feel some kind of connection with how you guys are reacting. So you guys get together, get a think tank going, and let's blow oh, yeah. this up. I appreciate you, brother. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Marie, is it Pendy? There you are. Go ahead and meet yourself, Marie. Welcome. Hi. Good, good evening, everyone. My name is Marie. Pendy, I'm zooming in from uh, Virginia. I just wanted to add to what uh, Joyce said about, you know, be, uh, uh, you know, people who need social uh, services. And there's a doctor who works with uh, other people in Botswana. That's a good team. But to complete it, the team, you also have to uh, make sure that in that team of staff, we have psychiatrists, psychologists, and psychotherapists, and nurses. Because each individual, like the doctor said, you group each uh, group of people based on their similar needs. In that, in the group, you also need to have a psychology, a psychiatrist, and a, a nurse, a psychiatric nurse, who will assess, uh, the psychiatry will assess the need of each individual. Because you can go to talk therapy, but some people need more than a talk therapy. Some people may have the therapy by talking, their, you know, by speaking their thought process. And a psychiatrist or a social worker will be able to figure out how to meet their psychosocial needs. Some people need that plus uh, a psychiatric management. And that uh, the same individual may also need medication management. So to complete a team uh, to work with each individual, you need all those people who, and everybody will come in and play their part uh, as to where the needs are as you talk one-to-one -one with the patient, with, with the people. That's what I wanted to say. A psychiatry, a psychiatric nurse who will manage their medication and all their nursing needs. And then a psychotherapy who will take uh, the people who need to have that psychotherapy. Maybe they need uh, psychodrama, for example. They need a few sessions of psychodrama. Some people need uh, you know, to have their basic necessity to be met, that's when a social worker will come in. And some people will need medication and to manage that medication so that everything comes together and build that person back to a normal strength. That's what I wanted to say to complete Thank you, the team. Marie. Thank you. You're absolutely correct. With and that. I'm one of the nurses who can do some of those things. Structure. Your yes. building structure. You remember what I said? We can't just throw money at something. It's been said a lot of times now. And this is what I'm talking about. This is probably how I should have started it off. My bad. I'm learning. I'm, I'm, an, I'm a retired auto worker, but I want to be part of everything that you guys are doing. So building the structure is important. We need everyone involved. Not only ideas, but professionalism. So Marie, thank you very much. I appreciate you. Chris, can I jump in there one second? When Absolutely jump in there, Joyce. Thank you. I agree with you, Barry, so much. Um, I am a psychotherapist as well. I did social work. So I do the psychotherapy as well. And there is a young lady that I work with. Is she's a, um, a mental health nurse as well. And she can, like she said, we'll need the psychiatrist and all that because the psychiatrist is going to do a, a different assessment and um, manage them if there's medication that's needed or if there's a severe mental health issues that the person is um, in need of. So they will step in and manage the medication. Um, so with the psych, with the psych, uh, psychologist and the psych, well, the, the, um, the um, psychiatrist as well, they will do an assessment. But remember, the psychiatrist is only going to see you every probably three to six months. So they're going to be specifically with medication management 
So, but I love to work with you, Marie, as well, too, and, you know, just get together and throw up an idea. So just wanted to say that, too. So we'll, and your daughter, Chris, too. So Amanda will get her in there. Yeah, she's listening in the other room, but she's listening. Uh, Can I also jump in there? Absolutely. Go ahead, doctor. Yeah, exactly. I like what she said, because uh, some of the resources, you may not necessarily take them out to be part of the, the group therapy, but you note these problems while you are with the young people or with the, the group that you are addressing and, and refer them when you get back to their communities, then you connect them with these resources. That's why, for example, in our approach, then we have these stakeholders already waiting to receive these young people and say, we are here. We also have special services like this and they build rapport with them. So we develop these cases when we are out there in the wilderness with them and we refer them to specialists. Uh, it depends also by country by country on how many resources you can, you can get. For example, in Botswana, there'll be very few psychiatric nurses uh, or psych, uh, psychologists, uh, but we find a way to complement them. And then I, I would like to also just say, you know, because people are unique, we also use multiple types of therapeutic approaches. We use art therapy, we use group therapy, we use music therapy. We use what we call rites of affirmation for them to confirm that the therapy is helping them throughout the two weeks when they are, when they are camping. We, we adapt to the type of therapy according to the group that is coming in. Thank you. So Chris, I just wanted to add, like in this team that I just said, you know, to develop a treatment plan for this, for each individual, which is unique. Somebody has to be writing the, the individual need. It could be, um, you know, the basic necessity of, of, of living, house, clothes, food, and all that. So if that person has, lacks any of the, uh, none of this, I mean, they lack all of this, like housing, we have to have a channel or a list of how we go, where are we going to do, what are we going to do with these people who need homes? So we need to build homes. So part of the treatment, big grand scheme of treatment plan for each individual will be, you know, find a way that we're going to build homes for them, find a way that we're going to provide food for them. Maybe uh, somebody just talked about, you know, uh, making a farm, having them grow their own crop, it could give that leeway for them to be able to provide that for them. So we just have to take an individual, assess each of their needs and figure out how to channel them to those needs or, and providing all those needs to meet the goal of that person in its entirety. That's it. Thank you, Marie. Thank you, doctor. I appreciate you guys. Uh, teaching us the stuff. Before we go on, um, I want to ask Julie if she can unmute herself. I want her to explain the form that she has in the uh, update section. Julie, can you please unmute and let us know, please? Absolutely, Chris. Thank you so much. Um, I just wanted to say a little bit on the purpose of the form that is posted in the back office. Right now, the last time I checked, we have five over 5,000 um, that have completed the form. However, out of those 5,000s, uh, the purpose of it, I believe, is Mr. Ash Mufar, look for professional, professionals like all the doctors here, the social worker here, the engineer, all of what starts, the, the people that actually currently holding license or currently work on the certain project. So, so he wanted to have that form just so that Later on, when he has a direction for Chris to go through, Chris can go into that form and pull up all of that. Let's say that we're talking about social worker today. He could go in there and do the searching of social worker and all the names that associate that, that has license, that has all of that will come together. And what he's gonna do, he's gonna pull all that and it's gonna come to a separate sheet. And that's when he will sort it out you know, asking people the correct questions or answers, and then he'll have organized a meeting. And I believe that was the purpose of that form. Therefore, if I may ask 
everyone that have spoken today, if you haven't done so, or if you have spoken, or if you have completed the form, but you didn't put the details in. So when you completed that form, all that form asks is who are you? How do you contact you email and a phone number and your profession? If you're currently holding a degree of psychologist like, you know, Joyce here, um, Joyce Hicks here, please specifically put it down. This is my current, this is my license, this is what I'm doing. I'm currently practicing it and I'm currently doing that. The more that you give the information in that particular column, it will help Chris to be able to sort out who are you and how to contact you. Let's say when he wants to have a social worker meeting, all he got to do, like I said earlier, it all populated out and then he has the exact people that he's looking for. And if you have completed that form before and you haven't done it, um, you know, said what you need to say, please go right ahead. When I sort that form out, I will pick the most that you put in there. Now, I'm asking for the information that goes in there that is accurate. If you are putting the accurate information out there, it will save Chris and the team to go through and sort it out again. So if you are a social worker of your whole license, just said, you know, I'm a, a licensed college, college, uh, psychologist or a social worker, or so, please use that term so that when he looked up, all he got to do is, is search for that. So if you could please, um, Go on there, and if you need to get in touch with someone, either Ash, myself, or Chris, we can go in that form, and then we can search up that information. And if you have completed that form, that means that you are you are comfortable. If Chris was to connect or use your email or phone number to give it to someone, it's kind of like permission for Chris to be able to do that or myself, you know, because I created that form for us to be able to do that. And if you do not want them to share any anyone, you know, like Chris or Peter uh, or Marty and all of that, that doing that, if you said I'm not comfortable of you sharing that, please note that on there as well. So that is a form where later on Chris is going to be using to connecting people when he has projects or when he needs help. So I just want to clarify that message really quick. Thanks, Chris. Thank you, Julie. And remember, you don't have to be a professional. You can still fill out. I still want names on that form. We're not, we're just trying to find the people that are already doing this stuff. But every one of you are 100% important on your ideas, your solutions, because we got a lot of work to do, brothers and sisters. So don't forget that. Fill it out, uh, whatever you want. Put it on there. We want to hear it all. So, Julie, thank you very much. All right. Marshmallow, William DeLorme, you please unmute yourself and tell us what you got. And Daisy, if you're out there, Daisy for p and I would like you to raise your hand. I will get to you, please. William, go ahead. Hello, Chris. Hello, brother. Uh, I remember when I came out of college, I volunteered for the church to help navigate, to help people navigate on the computer. And I was, and they had a lunch and they had breakfast. So uh, I was looking at these people and some of the people just can't help them. They just don't want to be helped. And sometimes I feel like they are possessed and they throw the table, they throw the chairs. And is that what you want to volunteer for, <laughs> honestly? And I, I'm thinking, actually, the homeless people most of them are like, you could say like 97% or 0.5, don't have families to go home when they are laid off or something of that nature. They have to go to the streets and look for help. So uh, I'm thinking Oblast is a really good thing for those people. So, uh, 
there is things, but security is a big thing because uh, I think demons and witchcraft and all these things that are on the street with drugs and everything is a big issue. So we have to think about that. So I'm bringing that up. So I want people to address that so they're prepared for it. Very good, William. All the drug addicts on here, please call William. I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> brings up a good point. You bring up a good point, William. Yeah, like the ladies said before, there's a lot of things that we have to uh, understand to help people. We can't just put everyone in one house and say, abracadabra, here's a magic pill, you're fixed. That's just not how it works. Here's a dollar, you're fixed. That's not how it works. So the people on here today are explaining how it works and they're giving us an education on how it works. William, thank you very much. Uh, Gladys, come on down, my beautiful sister. Thank you so much, Chris, and everyone here tonight. Uh, I'm not going to repeat what the rest have said. I think the social workers and Dr. Katsi have done a great job in addressing the basic needs. I'm going to come from the point of uh, the functional level of the, uh, the population or the clients we would like to help. This is because I work in a hospital, I've worked with the uh, uh, homeless patients and I see that uh, the level at which they are able to function is very important to know it. As uh, Joy said, it's good to know you know, to meet the person where they are. So first, I think as we plan to build this city, we need to identify what kind of clients will we like to have? How much can they do? Uh, are they, is it people who are totally independent who just need, you know, a place to sleep, a job to do, just to get back on their feet? Is it, some, uh, is it that some of them could need a cane to be able to move around? Will they need a walker to be able to move around? They can do as much as they can. All that they need is if they need those devices to be able to move around. That will help us to know the kind of houses or the kind of house that we will build. Because one of the challenges that we encounter in the hospital when we receive homeless clients is that they come to the hospital, but you find the shelter where they came from has stairs. And when they come to the hospital, they tend to decondition or they become weaker and the shelters are not able to accept them to go back unless they are able, they are able to walk with a cane or they are able to walk with their own feet because the building is not designed to accommodate the walker or to accommodate the cane. So we will need to know the type of the level of functioning before we bring them in to help us to design a home which can either accommodate anybody with a cane, with a walker or with a wheelchair. Because we have homeless people who are on a wheelchair, but still they are able to work. So that's what I wanted to bring in. And also they are healthy, addressing their health needs. If they are health, we have annual checkups. Uh, the social workers, and as Marie said, if there is a nurse to work together and empower them to be able to either schedule their own follow-up appointments for regular checkups, or if there are some who need a little bit help, you know, for us to help them to schedule the appointments, we can do that. And those ones who have any diagnosis that they need any education so that they can be able to manage the whatever diagnosis they have, for example, if they have diabetes or, or high blood pressure, so that they can be able to live a full life, even with those conditions, because we have so many people who walk around with high blood pressure, diabetes, but they are able to live uh, their lives fully. That's all I just wanted to add on. Otherwise, everything else has been discussed. And I'm very thankful about the team that we have tonight. Thank you so much. Wonderful, Gladys. Hey, you made a great point. You know, that's something I didn't think about. You just popped in my head. Yep, we have to design homes for people with that use the wheelchairs and the uh, 
walkers and the canes. I've been through that with my mom, had to knock some things down just to get her through some areas with her walker and her wheelchair. So Gladys, I'm very glad you brought that up. Notes are taken on that one. I appreciate you, my sister. All right. Uh, ooh, we got some hands going. Jake Fish, come on down, Jake. Hi, that, can you hear me all right? We can hear you, Jake. How you doing, brother? Hey, doing great. Uh, Feline and uh, World, World Energy and I had a very good meeting today. It was phenomenal. And that was a really, a really great point as far as the building. We should build all of our buildings um, so they're handicap access and everything. It should be straight across the board. because we're gonna have a lot of people coming through our houses and they're gonna get their help and they're gonna get better. And I just think that should be a standard. Okay, handicap access for everybody because we're gonna help a lot of people. Uh, the We Energy is over the top. Um, I think we're gonna break some records when, when we build in Michigan or, or whatever, uh, we'll essentially pretty much be able to, to uh, have these people live off the grid the way these guys work is, is phenomenal. And, uh, you know, the mental health is, is gonna be a, a huge, huge, Thing to tackle, but I think we have the people involved that will be able to take care of it. Another thing, um, now correct me if I'm wrong, but I think a lot of the mental health might be, you know, you know, if we gr have these growing farms and these buildings, we could provide jobs. And if we can give people some uh, self worth, I mean, is is that the main deal for for mental health? I mean, the social workers could probably clarify that, but I mean, I think we need to lift people up, give them give them a job to say, hey, you're growing, you know, these green beans, you know, farms in a box, or whatever. I mean, if we can give them jobs and feel that that they can have. Um, more self-worth i mean do you think that that's going to help their mental health are you asking you the social time. worker the question jake time in anytime you like anyone social worker want to answer that for jake um jake so jobs would be a part of it but until we address the underlying issue so it may be a job but there's an underlying issue there could be abuse there could be you know sexual abuse there could be um uh, trauma. There's so many things that's underlining. And so the job would be a part down the line and it would right. be great to help, help uplift their self-esteem. But first we have to get to the underlying issue. Once we can yeah. get to that, then um, because that person may not be capable of working or maintaining a job because of um, certain things that they've gone through in their background. So there's so many things that's underlining that we can get to first and then we can address that part because they have to be able to meet their basic needs. Um, some people maybe have to talk again how to get back into society because they've been out on you know homeless or wherever for, or on the streets or wherever their homelessness or issue may be. So they have to be taught and um, educated because say a person was homeless at the age of 12, they may be stuck in that person at that 12 year old person. So they have to learn how to move forward um, versus, right. so they may not even know how to, or they, they don't remember it's been so long since they've been employed that they will have to be taught the basic skills all over again, like the basic needs of, um, hygiene and all those different things like that. So that makes sense. And that's, so, just part you of know, it. we're looking at, at not only just building homes, but education centers, you know, perhaps, um, a little background on what happened to my grandkids is uh, my, uh, my daughter-in-law had an unfortunate accident. 
she was on on her deck and she slipped fell hit her head and landed uh face first in a in a pool of water uh, from a rubbermaid container and my grandkids found her uh dead and they're quite traumatized from that and and luckily my wife and i live like a stone throw away so we can see the see the children but they're still traumatized i mean i could not imagine what they have gone through absolutely jake do you have any more questions now that guy's now that let me use jake as an example he didn't know something he wanted to find out greatest thing in the world is the right information correct right? so if you got a, if you got a question and i'm trying to have shows where we have lawyers doctors we have social workers this is free education folks free education that's going to help you build or oh, bless higher and higher and higher up so we can actually fix many many things are we going to fix them all well damn i'm going to try my best to and i know you all are so jake do you have anything else brother all i gotta say is oh bless just by itself just by itself is going to rock the world like you have never seen. Just that one thing, oh bless, is going to rock the world. And it's going to change it for the better. And I'm, my skin is in it. I'm all in. <laughs> Jake, I know you are. And uh, yeah, I did hear you guys had a real good meeting the other day. I'm glad to hear that. Uh, I know where we, we need to go. Still, we want to put more things together. We want to educate people first. And we're going to do all that, Jake. So you just hang in there. We'll get back to you, of course. Uh, we're, we're going to win big time. Big Ab time. Absolutely. Thank you, Jake. I appreciate you, brother. No problem, Chris. All right, Mr. Peter, the best notes in the world. Oh, and let me say this before I forget. Right now, I have Daryl Cook and Janet Butler, who have, without me even asking, they decided to do a whole bunch of stuff and take notes. Uh, so Peter gets a little break. Daryl Cook writes excellent notes. He's actually taking notes of all this. Janet Butler's making spreadsheets. And I forgot to give him a shout out last week and I wanna give him a shout out, but uh, thank you, uh, Bahama team. I love you guys, appreciate you. And before I forget, Lynn Nakamoto, Thank you for all the advertising and helping out with run the panel. Cause sometimes at the end I'm all crazy and I forget, but I love you, my beautiful sister. Thank you for all you do too. All right. Where did my brother Peter sure disappear to Peter? Go I'm ahead. Here. I'm here, Chris. Thank you again for doing all the webinars and getting all blessed, getting together and, uh, you know, getting some ideas around from different professionals. Uh, thank you, Joyce, for being here. I appreciate you. Uh, very wise words, and uh, the doctor spoke. Uh, I don't want to butcher her name, so I won't say. I just say doctor. <laughs> Sorry about that. And uh, all the speakers in here. I had to take a call, uh, so I was absent for a little bit. But thank you all. And I like to uh, point what uh, Joyce and the doctor mentioned that we need to uh, make sure that we not judging anybody when we speak to, and look at what their needs are and. Um, the doctor mentioned something about uh, a social worker that have worked for the cities or the municipals. Uh, those are really good resources because they already have a lot of studies they do. So I think that's a, a, that's a good start. Not necessarily that we use uh, the resources, but we could use some of their services to theft through some of the people that we have uh, that, um, that we can be able to help. Um, also, uh, in regard to uh, William DeLone, what we were saying about in the church, some people were like drug addict and violence and stuff like that. That's definitely uh, something we, we know about and we need to make sure everybody is safe. We cannot put people together in the same home if there is violence or drug addict or alcohol uh, addiction. So that's something we always gonna look for. Safety is always first. And I believe Mr. Ash has always spoke about this, uh, that we have to make sure that safety is always number one priority before anything else. 
to protect everyone because those people, like the ladies mentioned here, they're very vulnerable. There are some of them are abused. So we need to be very careful with that. And again, the great ideas is being thrown around here. So I appreciate each and every one of you. And we can conquer this. I, I know we, as a team together, we can conquer this. So we can work together. And Obless is always going to be a winner. We're going to change the per, uh, each person, one person at a time, if we have to. But we will make it happen. Thank you again. Thank you, Peter Stewart, if you don't know. That crazy guy is the one that got me into this, and he had no idea. He had no idea. But I will tell you this. He was in it a long time before he told me, and I'm still mad at him today, but I love him with all my heart. Peter, I hope your wife's doing better. I know she was felt a little, oh, um, I hope you're doing great, brother. Uh, 100%, uh, Chris. Everything is uh, A-OK. -okay. And I also want to, uh, since you mentioned Daryl Cook, I want to give him a big credit shout out. So he backs me up with the uh, with the notes. Thank you so much, Daryl. I appreciate everything that you do, brother. Take care. Thank you, Pete. I appreciate you. All right. Oh, man, I love this lady. Marcin, open that mic and let's hear that beautiful voice. Thank you so much, Chris. Thank you for having me. And I just want to thank the previous speaker. And uh, Sister Gladys said something that brought me an idea. And she was talking about the people that when usually when they cannot go back to their home because they don't have access maybe to where they live, the stair or the wheelchair is not appropriate. So I was by then thinking that why we maybe we have to have a home for elder people because being homeless, you can be homeless in your own home. A lot of people, they become poor because they cannot afford to pay anybody to take care of them when they get some certain disability. I am a caregiver. I go around and help people, and I know what I mean. It takes a heart. Sometimes the person might not be able to pay you, and you do that work from your heart. So if we have a place that when people cannot do things for themselves anymore and they are there very affordable and they get a care from heart, not a care for money, I think it's going to help a lot of family because that's one thing too that you can eradicate poverty by helping people on their last time, the little time that they have to live, having a good life, having people like me that we can go there and give our time to help them or even bring other people that they do the same thing that we do every day and teach them to do the work from, from heart, not from money. I think it's gonna help a lot. A lot of people are going through that. They don't have anybody to take care of them busy, even to give them food, even to get them up from their bed and put them in their chair in the living room. And at that point, they become homeless in their own home. They have nobody to talk to. So I think that's one point that I wanted to say that not only talking about nursing psychology, we have to think about caregivers, the people like me that we can go out there and help also. Thank you so much, Chris. Thank you. Marcin, you know I love you. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> what are we doing? We're building the structure of how to help people though bless. So we have, uh, right now we have four hands up, which is Lily Lane, Sherry Dursway, Susan Hodges and some guy that says he's Ash Mafara, we're going to let him wait and see. I don't want to have to throw him off if he's real or not, but Lily Lane, please unmute yourself and go right ahead. Get it, Lil? Oh, I got it now. You Thank go. you so much, Chris, for this opportunity. As I listen to all of the professionals talk, it just made me want to do even more. But I feel that what I can bring to this community is a business a degree in business administration, my undergrad degree, a master's in administration supervision, and about 33 years of human resource management. I ran a uh, human resource office in about seven naval bases in the DC, Maryland area, and uh, had a team that was there. So I feel that I can bring to you from advertising position that is dependent on the kind of jobs that we're talking about. If we're talking about within the community, 
that's one thing. If we're talking about outside of the community, that's another thing, those processes. But I can bring, as I said, from advertising to hiring to screening to um, orientation to evaluation to promotions, counseling, the whole gamut of, of employee relation. Uh, so anyway, and I know that may not happen as early in the process as some of the other responsibilities, but whatever I can do. And what I will do, I will go back and refill out the form that Judy talked about tonight so that I can outline those things in more detail in terms of what I can bring to the community. Thanks, Chris, for having me. Lily, thank you. You know, I just thought about something when uh, I know your, your, your HR experience. You guys got to think about this. Uh, using two of our products, which is O Staff mm -hmm. and O Academy. Right. Can you imagine what we can do on O Staff to organize this also with everyone's ideas? Can you imagine now sending these ideas and these blueprints out, teaching through O Academy what we're doing? Um, the internet is a wonderful thing. And with those two products, I think that's going to help us out immensely. Lily, right. Lee, thank you for waking my brain up and thinking about something different. That's why we're doing this. I love you, my beautiful sister. Thank you, Chris. Looking forward to working with you. Sherry Dursaway, please unmute yourself. Yes, hello. This is, I love this topic, and I'm just so excited for Old Blast. It just gets my heart going every which way. Anyway, I had a few things. Um, I put it in the, the back office, the listing thing. Um, my daughter, um, she does this. Uh, she helps the houselessness, we call it houselessness out here. And um, what she does is she makes sure that her crew, um, she has a little speech with them first beforehand and makes to them realize that these are real people out there and they have feelings and they've been left behind. And we need to make sure each of them are very important in this world, no matter where they came from, what situation it is about. And also I heard about an app I, I wrote it down, but I don't have it in my notes in front of me that I saw oh, about a month or two ago. I don't watch a lot of TV, but it was on in the background. Um, it was some app that had to do with that. It was on Dr. Phil's uh, program. And um, so I think that would be helpful. And plus, um, I believe I have my notes here. Um, a lot of your houseless people have pets because that helps their brain and helps keep them going. Like we've been saying all along here, it's all about mental because even if you were put in that situation, it definitely would take a mental toll on you. And um, they have animals. So we need to work on helping the animals to get fit and whatever animals they have, make sure that they're taken care of as well because they're gonna wanna go with, with the person who's houselessness. And then, um, um, then, I also am, my heart kind of goes for, we need a different situation, different building or what have you, uh, facility for uh, battered people, whether it be the women, children, or uh, even men been battered before. Um, so we need something for that. Um, and of course, that entails ment medical, mental, medical and mental as well. And a lot of these people have children, so we need to make sure those children are covered as well. And I would love to um, help in that section and also to help with, uh, uh, like I do, I like to draw and do crafts and that kind of stuff. I would love to help the kids in any way I can to kind of keep their mind off the of stuff or help them, you know, feel wanted and fresh and. And, and help them draw or whatever it is to help them along the way on that. So, uh, and then also with disasters, you know how you, there's disasters that always happens all over the world, somewhere or another. We need to be sure to have Oblast set up for one little section just for that, whatever disaster it is, we just pluck it in. So like somebody could put up like, oh, there was a tornado in Oklahoma and, uh, uh, three blocks and then shut blanked out so we can all dip our money into that whatever that is and and start helping that way and then work from there whatever that thing needs 
um, besides the, the funds and the, the food and all that um, to go from there, because those two people will also need some kind of medical and, and mental health as well, because they've been through uh, losing their home or, or pet or lost a loved one. So those are my thoughts. Um, back over to you, Chris. Thank you so much for letting me talk. I'm so excited. Thank you, Sherry. I definitely uh, hear it in your voice. Absolutely, I'm an animal lover. And believe it or not, there's a lot of therapy that they use for uh, people with disorders in their mind and animals help out. So uh, another great thing that was brought up, Sherry, I appreciate you. Now, listen, I know it's 1030. I know Mr. Ash Mafara has to go to work here. Uh, he probably took a 10 minute nap and I know his timeline uh, has got to go to the office. So Susan, unless Ash tells me different, would you mind giving Ash, let him have the floor here and then I will get back to you, Susan, if that's okay. Okay, Mr. Ash Mafara, if that's really you, brother, come on out. No, Chris, we can listen to... Uh... The three in queue, William, Willow, and uh, Susan. Uh, just in case, I uh, take more than three minutes. I have a feeling I will take more than three minutes. Okay, I knew you were gonna say that, but you know, I had to offer because Marty would beat me up. All right, Susan, but the gentleman uh, took his said, go right ahead, Susan, go right ahead. Thank you so much, Mr. Ash, and thank you for all you do for all of us. Um, I, I can't thank you enough, but, um, I, I am, um, I was a manager for Goodwill. I have lots of years of experience in office and, um, bookkeeping and anything to do in an office, basically. Um, I'm, my OCD is organization. If you need anybody to organize things, um, <laughs> that, that is just uh, something I, I don't live without. And um, I've a few experiences I, I just wanted to bring up that might help. Um, when my brother passed away, I, or before he passed away, I went to see him in October. And I was just totally blown away when they were taking me back to the airport in Houston and saw the miles and miles of tents under the bridges. I mean, I don't, think a lot of times people realize how big the problem is in, in certain areas, I guess. I never did. I mean, and um, so me bringing to it would be um, a lot of people aren't going to trust you. The first thing I think we need is to build trust. And I think the easiest way would be to um, feed the people to bring food and to start talking to them. Because I don't think if you open a door that they're gonna come running a lot of them. They, they don't trust people, you know, and I don't blame them. Um, so that would be my first take. And then as a, as a manager of Goodwill, um, they have addressed, there are a lot of different problems we have to handle. Um, but one thing I wanted to say is I, I used to have a gentleman that came to our dumpster in the back of the Goodwill and I'd have to chase him away because he wasn't allowed to dumpster dive in our dumpster and talking to the man, he was a lawyer and he was brought, you know, into the situation, um, by life. And so people can be very intelligent just because they're homeless doesn't mean they're not intelligent. They just need help. Some of them want help up and some of them don't. So we have to look at the, they're all human. They're all different levels. And we have to decide what, you know, have the, these mental health people or counselors decide where they're at and which way to go. So I thank you so much. That's all I wanted to say. And any way you can use my help, um, Goodwill does, um, they're the clothes, they even send clothes, but they sell them overseas. Um, we could just, what we don't use and what we don't sell to make money, we can um, just send them to the other countries that need them, so. Susan, thank you. I'm very sorry for the loss of your brother and you're right, seeing those kind of, the way people live in the, on the streets to me is horrendous. Uh, 
Goodwill is a great thing because I use them all the time. So I really bring, uh, I'm happy you brought that to the table, Susan. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you for having me on. You're welcome. Thanks for coming. William Norris, go ahead. Uh, you guys, you know what you got to do. Don't take forever and tell me what you got, William. I just wanted to piggyback, Chris, on the, uh, you know, the structural uh, details for the uh, handicap in any structures that we might get involved with. That information is going to be with all the municipalities, whether it be a, a state, city, or county uh, authority. Uh, and, you know, I have the background to go into that and, and dig that information out and, and help with that. Wonderful, William. Yep, that's what we need. We need people to understand the laws and that already understand the laws, as you say. So, William, I, I really do appreciate that. Get on that. If, if you could connect with William about knowing the laws and the legalities and all the rules of building things, uh, get with William and start building a, you know, a little board, a little team for yourselves and put ideas together. William, thank you very much, my brother. I appreciate you. Yes, sir. Each one of those uh, municipalities will have some different details. Um, you know, every, every municipality is different. So, so we'd have to look at each one on a, you know, a single basis. But I mean, it's not, it's not hard to do. Absolutely. I like that. It's not hard to do, William. That's music to my ears. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you, brother. I appreciate you. All right. My beautiful 21-year-old girlfriend, Willow Griffith, come on down. <laughs> I look like the bag lady tonight. Oh, not so at please, all. please forgive me. I've been out working. I I wanna I wanna just kind of I'll keep it as brief as I can, Chris. On Sunday, I had a marvelous experience with Engineer Mike, and he helped me so much. And he brought up to me that his dream was to help people that didn't have knowledge of computers. He says, I'm a teacher, I'm a teacher at heart. I wanna put free lessons out on O Academy to help those um, people that need it. And I was so impressed with him. I, I think I, I have set him on a pedestal and I think somebody's gonna knock my head off pretty soon, but I just was amazed at his heart. And he was the one in case you know you didn't remember, he was the one that offered the homeless boy that we were talking to three founder positions he bought and paid for for him so he does not have to be hungry ever again. So I wanted to put in a word about Mike because he's in the, in the chat tonight and he helped me so much I can't tell you and I'm pretty knowledgeable about technology but that YouTube was throwing me for a loop and he just opened my eyes and it was wonderful. Okay, having said that, poverty is a multifaceted problem in our world, not just in our United States. But one of the things here in the United States that is very, very critical is the mental health organization we have is so underfunded and I have families that I know firsthand and in their founders also, um, some of them, they have schizophrenic children that are on the street because they can't get them any facility to live in and they're willing to pay for it, mind you. They have money, they're, you know, they, they have enough money to do it, but they just, there's no, no resources for them. So when we start taking care of people on the street, you're going to have to do just like, you know, Mr. Norris and, and some of the other more learned people. We can't just be have an open door policy because there are some out there that are violent offenders also. There are children out there that are violent offenders and just because they're a child, you may think they're okay and they can snap on you and knife you in the back overnight, you know? So we, we're we gonna have some bigger problems than we're thinking. And when Julie fill, had to fill out the form, I, for one, I'm retired. I don't hold the license anymore as a psychologist, but I 
you know, have had the training, but I don't have the physicality anymore left that I could take care of street problems. I used to, but I can't anymore. And so I think those of us intellectually, we should get together. And and like Susan, you know, she's had years of experience with the poverty situation with, uh, I'm a Salvation Army fan. I helped with the Salvation Army for years and years and years. And they're a very, very, very good organization. But I don't have uh, the physical stamina to do what you young spring chickens can do. But I can offer my two cents worth. So I didn't, you know, fill in some of the things that I've been involved with in my life. And perhaps I should go back and redo that because I really didn't, because I don't hold a license anymore. And, and I didn't want to be, you know, putting it out there that I was a practicing psychologist because I'm not anymore. So I'll, I'll redo it, Julie, you know, when I remember to get over there. But I wanted to say just one other thing and then I'll get off because I'm anxious to hear that. I think what we're doing here is so big and Chris is the size that can fill the shoes and Peter sure of those that we need. But we have to remain unified and not competitive. If we are not competitive, we're going to reach out and touch more people um, and help and do more things that Mr. Ash has informed us to do. You know, what he wanted with Old Bless. And I, I help women that are battered, and I counsel free for them without being charged uh, with three crisis centers. So I work all day long, and I'm on Zoom constantly. I can contribute a lot of things, but it's mostly from my own home. I can't get out there physically and do it. But we don't want to ignore those people like myself that have enough knowledge about the street that we can help in our own ways. And, and so I just kind of wanted to get that in. I didn't want you to think I was trying to shirk my duty here. And because I think we all have a duty to those that need our help. Uh, that young man that was out on the street, I cried all night long. And thank God for um, our, our friend, Engineer Mike helping him out I you know people don't know how hard it is for kids that are ADHD that are Asperger on this uh, on the syndrome they're brilliant <coughs> but they can't they can't communicate like you and I communicate so there's another thing there too that you know some of them are blind some of them are deaf we, there's so many things we have to do to even tap into one little level of poverty. And like Ash said, I can't help everybody, but we can help one. And we did last week with Jeannie's little friend she picked up off the street. And that's how we have to start. Okay, I'm off my, my soapbox. Well, I Willow, thank you. Willow, listen, I don't care what your age is because you're beautiful to me, but you just educated a lot of people. Uh, maybe you can't get out of your home and do like you used to do, but you got it. You got an internet and an academy that I'm sure you're going to be teaching a lot of wonderful things about. But Willow, everything you always say blows me away. I love you with all my heart. Thank Thank you very much. You are as important as anyone in this family. Let me tell you that for your knowledge. Well, I thank you for that. I sometimes, you know, they want to stifle me, but I don't blame them. I like to talk to, but, uh, I want to tell my friend Marty just one word. I loved you more today than I've ever loved you. <laughs> you did good today. I cried. You touched my heart. Don't ever stop because we need you, Marty. Okay? Thank you, darling. 
Willow, now I got to run over there and give him a hug because I know yeah. he's going to cry. But thank you, Willow. Now, before we bring on Mr. Ash Mafara, Marty DeGarmo would like to say something. Marty, the floor is yours, my brother. I'll be really quick. Willow, you shouldn't have said that right before I came on. Now I'm having trouble. Anyway, but thank you very much. Why do people do that to me? Um, listen, I, I, I know I talk a lot, but I do have two ears and I listen. I listen a lot, too. Um, in the last few weeks, I see many people here in different qualities and things they know and, and parts of this that they can do that will blow it away. We've got captains, generals, lieutenants, sergeants, nurses, doctors. I mean, we're packed. I have a thought that, that I've, I've probably brought up before. I know right now while we're having this meeting, or I'm pretty sure, there's men and women, army of people walking the streets covering people, handing them soup, helping them whatever way they can. These people, to me, are unsung heroes. We don't know their name. We don't know where they're from. But they're truly doing what the best they can with what they have. I think if anyone here could get into a community and start pulling people out that or on the front line, let's say, right? And bring them in and ask them, if the right resources were there, what would you do? Because I think when you're walking the streets and it's cold and you have five blankets and there's six people to cover, that's gotta be heart wrenching. And I gotta believe in every city in the United States and every village around the world, this is going on. There's armies and armies of unsung heroes. And I, for one, if you get them involved and we back them up with doctors, lawyers, monetize whatever they need, buildings, whatever you want to call it, then finally the real heroes get to be get the knowledge and get and get the people looking at them. Because right now, while we're talking, there's somebody trodden through some nasty places trying to help everybody they see with absolutely nothing. And I think if there was a way to get into these communities or community services and start pulling these people that are running soup kitchens or supplying blankets and get them involved, and then everyone here can help them give them what they need. Now there's some stuff they don't know, but I think in general, always the person on the front line, there's something they know that we don't know. And I just wanted to add that 35 cents or whatever it was worth, but thank you very much. Absolutely, Marty, thank you. Absolutely, people out there doing this and they don't even need to be recognized. So I appreciate it. Now, uh, Julie just raised her hand up. Go ahead, Julie. I know Ash will let you go before. Go, Julie, go. Um, Chris, just, just one minute. I just want to clarify what uh, I said earlier. It's not just professional people completing the form. The form is made for everyone, anyone who would like to participate in OBLAS. So I just want to make that clarification. The second one that I wanted to say is that if you have 10 unpassive accounts, and if you sign up 10 accounts on OBLES, it does not make sense because all we need is email and, and phone number and your profession. So just one is good enough because I've seen several people have like lists of 10 of them or 15 of them on there. So thank you, Chris. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, Julie, my beautiful sister, for all their help and everything that you do in helping us all. Mr. Ash Mafara, I yield the floor to you, sir. Now he's going to hide. Thank you, my brother. OK, good evening. I uh, was listening, and I thought, no, I should talk. I do have a few things to say. I don't promise you it would be quick. So if you just joined us, great, because it's going to be here for a while. Why? Because we have business to do. If you've been here for a while, you can take a break and come back. But not very long, three seconds. Just want to thank you for what you're doing, Chris. Everybody. Uh, Congratulations to Peter Sroor because uh, his uh, 
two daughters, Amanda and Mary, on uh, Saturday will be graduating. Two in one. Can you beat that? So that will be a good event. And we're going to celebrate that where? On Burj Khalifa. Okay. We're going to do some fireworks for that. Congrats for the two young ladies. And uh, I enjoyed listening to all of you. I appreciate you. But I have a few things I've been thinking about this uh, uh, concept of uh, oh bless. Uh, before I get going, I just have a feeling. I just have a feeling. I cannot prove it. I cannot validate it. I cannot confirm it. But Chris Johnson may be the first on passive Mother Teresa. There are so many kind people and fine people, but I just have a little feeling. It's a, it's a feeling. I don't know how to explain it. He will be the first graduate, okay, to lead the next million of us. All right. So there have been so many attempts to conquer poverty for generations. We can fact check if it worked or not as of now. Do we still have poverty? We still have poverty. That means it's not working. Okay. Uh, I do believe uh, it's, there's not one thing you can do that will defeat and eradicate the whole dilemma. It has to be a set of actions to do that in tandem. But it will be insane for us to expect repeating something from the past, from what been attempted and expect a solution. You know, the definition of insanity is to keep doing the same thing over and over and over and expect a different result. That is insanity, meaning cuckoo, okay. So we don't want to be that. Uh, so it, my projection for the whole thing was to come up with something completely out of the blue, outside the box, totally disruptive, the same fashion we came after and the same style we came after our success and on passive. Let me whisper something to you. Okay. I don't believe we cannot defeat poverty. In my mind, poverty is a solution. We have the ability as 8 billion living human beings, we have the ability to take care of that if we have the will. Do we have the will? Listen, we've, we've gone to different planets. We've gone to, uh, you know, with, with AI, with the, with this new technologies and all those incredible ideas about energy and water, all of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all beautiful. We can conquer poverty. poverty. Uh, if we go the same way at this target, the same way we go, we go after our own benefits. Like if, if the top successful 100 men on, on earth they are extremely wealthy and successful. If they go the same way after poverty, genuinely, the same way they go for their own benefit and, and success and business and agenda, it could have been done. So I have a feeling, again, there's no way I can validate. There's not a complete genuine solution that has been conducted so far. I have some doubts. I'm just a skeptical person. When it comes to what I see, it's either a cover-up for what they have. It's either to get attention and popularity, or it's just a bait for a bigger business behind it. In other words, there's a, an, a, 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 an obvious abuse and um, manipulation 
in the system. One thing I know for sure, one thing I know for sure, no doubt in my mind, that conquering or, or, or solving poverty is not going to come from the White House or the Kremlin or Bijan or so, you know, any capital. It's not going to come from there. Politics works as if you're idiot, if you're broke, bim, boom, they thrive. If you're educated, if you're wealthy or financially settled and independent, they bankrupt. Understand how I'm not against, we shouldn't have a government, regulations, all, I'm all for it. We have to have a system, but it needs some work and, and, and fixing. So unless, unless we, we fix so many pieces and understand the roots of poverty and the causes of that and solve them, you know, NLP, I'm sure Joyce and those who work in social work, you got to have, you have to understand the, uh, the brain programming. Okay. So unless you understand the causes, the roots of the problem and go after them, you're just going to have a Band-Aid on a cancer. It's not going to work. Okay. So we have to go after the root. What are the roots of poverty? And I hope you're not waiting for me, Julie. Are you waiting for me to finish so you can talk? Then jump over, because I, I I feel bad if you have if you have something. Okay, I don't mean to. I have to spoken, Dash. So you I'm you're sorry? good. I have spoken, so you're good. Oh, you did. Okay. Yeah, thank Fantastic. You. Okay, but but you can jump in. Cut me off anytime. Okay. When I'm not making That's sense, good. you just cover me. Okay. <laughs> so uh, what what I believe. Okay. Uh, first of all, we're not going after fixing. I, I want to clarify this. In in my mind, in my intention, I'm not going after homelessness. That's just one area of poverty. If you want to solve it, you want to go for the whole thing. You want to aim big, all right? God doesn't require require us to succeed. I'm trying to read what's behind me. Okay. He uh, only requires that we try. In other words, we will shoot for the moon. If we fail, if we miss, we will land among the stars. Big deal. But we're going to try hard. Okay. We're going to try very hard. In fact, I saw, I was just reading uh, on uh, Elon Musk's uh, uh, tweet, if we get Twitter, all of that, he got it, okay, but just a couple of days ago, we will fix spam or we will die trying. I don't believe we will die trying because if, if it's in the right hands, it will be fixed. Even if we die, we will get it done. So just imagine, just imagine a little fantasy, okay, we go after poverty, not homelessness, not water, not animals, not one. It's all blessed. The whole thing that, you know, the, the whole globe is, is blessed. All right. Everything is, is done. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you how. So if we go the same way with the same energy, the same stamina, the same wisdom, the same tenacity, after we went, uh, the way we went after achieving on passive, from nowhere, it's a done deal. Okay, do I need to rephrase? If we go as hard or the same exact way, the same style, we went after it on passive to get it done. You know, it's done, right? Okay, so the same way if we go after poverty with deep conviction with that real passion and desire to get it done, it will be done. It's a done deal. So the motive is what's lack. The will is what's lack, okay? And you have to do it, you know, all the way. Cannot fix one side of it and uncover, you know, 
have another loophole. Okay. You have to fix the whole thing. All right. So poverty comes from what? Wars, crimes, stupidity. I mean, ignorant, uneducated society, right? What does it come from? Okay. Uh, corruption. Okay. Uh, health issues, disability, in other words. Okay. That's what, you know, prevent people from having a, a, a you know, source of income or proper lifestyle or burden on life, you know, get them just, they give up mentally. Okay. So there's another thing I wanted to say that uh, about poor minds and, uh, you know, it's all about if you have, I mean, your success is determined by your mind. If you have a rich or poor mind, it is just going to determine your status, right? Uh, so I do believe that uh, we, uh, we have to consider education. You cannot have uh, a separate uh, dimension, okay? If there's a solution that doesn't take care of edu educating society, it's not going to it's not going to be a long term. So let's go to the beginning of unpassive. Let's see the commonality between unpassive and obless. If obless is going to be the solution for poverty, right? Are you with me so far? Are we building some logic together? Okay. So I do have a, an incredible passion for people. I love people. That's how I started for Unpassive. But I'm no longer alone. I'm not one individual anymore. Remember, individually, we are drops, scattered, nothing. Together, we are an ocean. And boy, are we an ocean now. Look who we have on board. Okay? I'm no longer alone. We do love people. I'm not the only one who loves people or have passion. So we have, I do trust that we have a better desire, higher than before, higher than average, higher than anywhere else, in our passive, using our bless to defeat poverty. It doesn't have to be complete for now, because let's say older generations that they have a, 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 a more complex and severe issue, they can be dealt with individually on one-on-one -on -one basis, right? But at least if we could have the resources to uh, take care of that. But we wanna focus on the younger generations and the future generations. So if we take care of, of, of you know, society, if we wanna take care of the future society, we take care of them now with the younger kids today. So number one, if they're educated, we give them proper health and put them on the right track. You got nothing to worry about in the future, okay? And solve all the other relevant issues. If we have, if, if the, the country is broke, you're gonna have poor people, okay? If the system is broken, you're gonna have issues. So do we all agree that we love, 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 love people genuinely? Okay, we do love people, but we do agree that we will make a difference just by that love. Even if everybody impacts one person's life, it's going to make a major impact because we're so many. Right? Okay, so the other one is we have to agree we're not going to really take care of every little tiny issue. Okay, if, if something is just so complicated, we don't want to be stuck against the wall if it's just a temporary case. Let's focus on the future. If we have the foundation for a, but, but listen, don't take me wrong. I love people, but there are some people, yeah, they really need a lot of love. In fact, it's no joke. I, uh, I was talking to God. 
a while back. I said, you know me, God. You know how much I love people. And I believe in you. I do have a little list, tiny list. I have some names on it. It's not big. You can handle it. I wish you, you would consider. I'm going to leave it somewhere. You know how to find it. When I come the next day, I hope you will tell me it's taken care of. So it stayed there for a while. So I got the message that God said, I don't want them either. So no matter what we try to do, you understand there, there are going to be some people will refuse help. It's not going to work. Don't get stuck with the little pity things. We're going to focus on the bigger scope. You follow me so far? All right. Even if it's late, it's not late. We're just like they're waking up in India now. Okay. So. We agree we have to do something different, hasn't been attempted before. We agree we have to target all areas. We have to be disruptive, just like on passive. We agree it takes a team. It takes a massive team like on passive, right? All of that, fantastic. And we're gonna try hard, not just try to show, okay? Uh, we're gonna go very hard at it, okay, all the way. So uh, if we miss, we're gonna, land among the stars. I mean, period. Uh, if you have a poor society, you're going to have a, or yeah, uh, you're going to have poverty, uh, mentally poor, okay? If we have educated society, I don't mean diplomas, okay? I do have to say that. I, I hope you're not waiting for degrees and, you know, uh, Diplomas. No, I'm talking about aware, okay? Effective. So, I want you to, 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 to trust me that uh, perhaps how we do on passive is one thing, right? If we do it the same way, it's going to be great. It's going to be a good success. Why? Because how you do Anything is how you do everything. We're not going to do it for a show. Okay? Trust me, we don't need more foolish work to distract us from other things. If we don't mean to solve it, it wouldn't be on the list. It wouldn't be on the table because it's going to take time. Gonna be, it, it's going to take energy and it's going to take, you know, uh, commitment for us to solve it. It's not going to be a wish. Okay? So, as hard as we went after on passive, we go after poverty, sometime from now it will be done. But uh, because of the spirit and the attention that we have, and I, I do want to mention something. If there's money involved and there's management and there's a system, it sounds like a business to me. So let's stay away from that, okay? It sounds like a, this is not a business. This is being a good human being, okay? It can, you cannot talk to me about Oh, bless, and this project, and this, this is a plug. Don't, don't fall into that. Okay, so we're going to focus on doing good. How we do good is very simple. So let's say there are 1 billion poor people on the planet. Okay, remember, the genius is to turn something complicated into simple. Yeah, poverty is complicated, but let's simplify it. If people have enough knowledge or the poor people, the poor people, 1 billion people, if they have more knowledge in any area, okay? Any area, it doesn't have to be on the book, you don't have to read and write, okay? If they just have enough knowledge to survive, take care of themselves, be independent, and have an opportunity to earn on their own. So more knowledge and more money, 
straightforward. I'm not talking about a billion dollar business for each. They're talking about survival, talking about getting off the street, getting take care of their health, their, their, their uh, family, okay? Doesn't take much. There's no force on earth can convince me we cannot solve this. Do we have enough food, yes or no? Do we have enough knowledge available, yes or no? We have enough resources, yes or no? We have enough love, yes or no? We have enough will and I'm passive or blessed, yes, okay. So if we have all of that, it's all about packaging. That is the arrangement, is how we connect the pieces and the puzzles, is how we distribute wealth. So why don't we flip the picture? And I'll give it back to Chris or, or Julie if they want to take over. Why don't we just be, become so disruptive? Okay, let's say we have 8 billion people. Okay, the, the bottom 1 billion. You want to do it that way? The bottom 1 billion. meaning they have less than $1.90 per month or per day, the poverty line. $2 a day. They're not making that. No way. Regardless of their region or currency. Why don't we go after the 1 billion and focus on them, emphasize our efforts for them to be lifted up first? In other words, flip the picture, have them above us, above humanity. They become the top 1 billion. How? The own passive opportunity. So instead of going just complicating things and we're gonna invent and reinvent and do, okay, and go the long circle, where we have been before and you know many attempts before why don't we give why don't we systemize where we can educate those people enough again they don't need to be scientists rocket makers they don't have to to do that okay they just need to be sufficient where they have a device That's the tool they need. Subscription cost, the ability to drive or to, to manage this business and account and put it to work. And how do you use it? One of them, we support them. The company is still going to do traffic to get one. With us collectively one, and on their own, they succeed to do that. Now they have a business for life paid for, covered. I used this example earlier today with the Arabic team, and I just said 100. Let's, let's th think the cost is 100. I'm going to help you. It's a little twisted on passive, but in a good way, okay? But it will be more uh, informative, okay? So... Don't go too far and don't use this as the actual number, but I'm just going to give the 100 as, you know, whatever the currency is, apple, onion, okay, uh, banana, or dollars, coins, pesos, you name it. Okay, so we have 100 is the cost. Lily Lane would go and pay. The, the, the doors are open, activate. Obviously, founders first, okay, before the public. Go, activate your account. The minute you activate it, set up your account and profile. You are confirmed. You are activated. You have set up. You have a domain name. Your business, live, everything is taken. The company is taking over all of that. You put 100. Just imagine we give you a five, five, whatever it is. Okay, as a registration bonus. You are in green on day one. 
instantly. Perhaps you go to work. What's that beep? Okay. You go to work, the company go to work, and the team go to work. Down the road, whatever it takes, you got three registrations, three sales, three subscriptions, packages sold. Let's say you are at the, uh, at the package level or the product. You cannot, what, you cannot give what you do not have. First, you get it. Second, you are able to resell it. So you have 100. Day one, you have five, just one-time bonus because your wallet now is green. The, the figures, the numbers are in green. So you, you feel positive, motivated. It is working. It's guaranteed. You know how people try to prove to you you can make a dollar online and it's the first dollar. If you can make a dollar, you can make a million dollars. Same concept. We're going to make it five or 10. It's not dollar, but it's different. Okay. So conviction is checked day one. So let's say whatever amount of time it takes us, all of us, that Lily has um, three sales. Each sales earns her 35. It doesn't take a genius. I'm just telling you simple math. Do the math. 35, 35, 35, 70 and 105, okay? The cost is what? 100. She has excess of what? Five. She's in profit. Never pay. She got the whole business, the ability to sell it and do it again. Same thing goes for the three. And it's not limited to three, just to be clear. It just takes three to break even. So it's not like a three, four, something. To just stay away from that. Okay, we're done with it. Okay. So just unlimited. You have three billion, you're gonna have three billion. Okay. But it takes three for you. No longer out of pocket. So if we succeed to do that with Joe, the broke, poor person, we're not going to do the one billion at a time. Let's go after, everybody would go after one. We're one million. We fix one million as one circle one cycle, rinse and repeat. That's what I wanted to share. I don't know if you're gonna invite me ever again, Chris, but this is what I thought I wanted to support you. I do believe in you and I am very hopeful that uh, this is uh, a very uh, sincere uh, discussion that will lead us to the solution. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Uh asked my number one brother well I'll wait i gotta put marty there because he'll get all jealous you know that but yeah uh, of course this is the uh the push that i needed um you said some pretty amazing things today um, i'm pushing myself with with a lot of people as you can see on here who's been with us since we started this um appreciate your wisdom and your words because i learned a whole bunch of stuff in a few short minutes on the direction. And I do want to let everyone know that this is something that Ash wants us to do together. If you understand, Ash's schedule is busy. He's always going to be part of everything, but we want him to keep going and doing what he's doing because without on passive, there is no old bless because no one's ever done this before. No one's ever brought people together like this. And I'm still blown away by that. And once a, once on passive, uh, which I already think it's it's going. In my mind, it's going. It's strong. It's hard. And that's why I said, man, you guys have some wonderful ideas, but structure is everything. Education is everything. And we just got to keep doing this. Like I said, the people that are talked on here that are interested in each other's ideas, man, make make that connection with those people. Build these little committees, or boards, or families, however you want, and let's build this. Oh, bless, like I said, it's everything. Everything really that's wrong. So I'm really excited to hear him say that. And my, one of my favorite things he says is, and I write it down every time he says it, <laughs> how you do anything is how we do everything. And he's absolutely correct, because 
if we work as hard on anything we do and we take that much energy and put into a bless, we are unstoppable. It is curable. Maybe we can't fix diseases, but we can help people out with diseases that have been overlooked. And uh, I thank God every day for coming into this family and listening to the advice of not just Ash Mafara, my brother Marty, and every one of you guys. You guys inspire me. Uh, Mother Teresa can't even hold a candle. I can't even hold a candle, but I'm going to try. I'm going to give it 100%. All right. Because one, one day, as Ash says, when I leave and I'm going to leave someday, when my great grandkid says, yeah, my my grandfather, my great great grandfather was Chris Johnson. He was part of something called Obless, which you all know about today because it's it's a household name and it's probably written on everything because that's how I see him passing. But Obless, Obless, to be remembered that you, you went out and you helped people do things, that is the greatest memory that I want to leave. And I'm doing it with millions of people and it's going to keep growing. So, um, Engineer Mike, number one, I want to back up what Willow said. You are a brother, and I love you because what you did, but not, not everything you did. What you just did about helping Mark out last week was awesome, and you know I love it. But everything else you're doing, teaching people, Mike, that's good. Mike, go ahead. What you got, my brother? Thank you, all our leaders. Good evening, Mr. Ash. I mean, this is this is very inspiring for us. When you come out here and you tell us, we want to we want to really eradicate, help to eradicate these situations in the world, poverty and all that. Telling us that we are looking for the poorest people, one billion people down there. That is what is giving us when we want to say something, we say it with pride, and we know we are in good hands. I want to thank you for your directives. I want to thank you for everything you do for us. We'll make a better place. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Ash, you're, we're on, uh, I know that your time is busy. I know this is a hard time for you at night. You. Okay, you Chris, to... I will go. I will go. <laughs> Don't worry. I'll listen from you too. No, but I, I appreciate you for what you do. do of course. To come on here, I think, uh, you know, we have a couple hundred people on here and we've got a million, 300,000 people. I don't expect them all to get on every webinar, but to me, this is this is a very important webinar because people are actually really coming together uh, to help out a lot of people. Uh, Julie, I know that you wanted to say something. Julie, you want to unmute yourself, please? Thank you, Chris. Uh, you know, Mr. Ash, and you had just said it, uh, Chris, how you do everything, how you do anything is how you do everything. I believe what you are doing in Unpassive is you are currently building that foundation. And we're talking about structure, right? That's one of the reasons why I see that you have the infrastructure starting. And it doesn't matter how big we are going, but our foundation, it's not strong, it's not able to hold the growth and everything, it, it's not going to be sustainable. It's not going to last long. So what Mr. Ash is doing right now in Unpassive is building that foundation, is, is building that infrastructure, right? And what we are doing here with OBLESS is building that foundation. And that foundation is everyone that are involved in OBLESS, all the angels, everyone that has that. But you know what? The best foundation, the best foundation is all in everyone's heart. It doesn't matter how much we want it to do, but we have to really decide if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it for the rest of my life. It's OBLESS. It's something that we need to decide to do it. You know, right now, on passive hasn't launched. We've been involved. We know exactly what it is. We say we say that we do this and we do that. But what if when on passive launch? What if things that are going to change? Are we still in it? And that is a foundation I believe that we all need to start it. It's within ourselves. And I wanted to kudo to Chris. Chris Johnson is a person that exhibits 
that foundation, that heart, because every single one of us, if we truly see what he's doing and watching what he is saying, he exhibit that foundation. And I believe wholeheartedly it's what we are doing right now. It's not how we're going to do it. The how will eventually come. But if we are doing right now by building that strong foundation, have that infrastructure, have everything, single one of us are the infrastructure of unpassive, right? And all of us need to stand strong in that foundation in order to have that infrastructure strong and sustainable. And once we have that, I believe the how will eventually come into its place. So that's how I believe, Chris. And I, I wanted to say, Chris, you truly exhibit the Oblast. And um, kudos to you, Mr. Ash, for seeing it in uh, this, uh, this guy I call brother. So that's all, Chris. Back to you. I have to unmute himself. Ash, go right ahead. Thank you, Julie. Well, thank you. I was uh, just going to say, like, uh, don't worry about the time and all of that. If somebody's busy, they're not going to be here. And if they have something more important, they can go. But how how many times we've been on uh, shows or things that we just realize they're just a total waste of time. And if you tune into any channel or show at any given moment of the day, any country, you're going to find a lot of nonsense. You're going to find a lot of nonsense. And it's just sucking up people's time. And it's just for selfish uh, benefit. Just a couple of people are monetizing that time. Uh, no, here is unique. It is something that is worthy and is going to make a difference. Is the seed and the foundation, as Julie said, uh, for something rather will make a difference. And it's not for a single individual. It's not about one of us. It's about not, none of us actually here, okay? Ultimately, it will help us feel better and accomplished, but it's for others that they need someone else to care for them. You just need to care about one person, okay? So uh, it is worth it. I don't regret it. it, it you know, it's, it's a priority. It's not a side uh, chat to me. Uh, it is a priority. We, we said it. It's not a joke. We said, oh, bless. We said, oh, academy. We said, oh, women. Those are for a reason. For a, a, we, if we do those three things properly and effectively, we have a better society. We have a better global uh, population, uh, at least, you know, down the road. Okay. Because I told you there's some, you know, uh, <laughs> crazy maniacs we cannot fix at the moment. Yeah. I mean, the good news, God eventually will consider them. You know, he's not going to change the system, so they will be taken. But sadly, they're still with us. Hey, so man. we're going to have to foresee this temporary generation ahead, okay, the generations to come. Uh, let's say the DeGarmo's grandchildren, those are the ones that should not have any uh, dealing with this. This should be something from the history, just like past. So I do believe it's effective, it's worth it. Don't look at the clock, okay? We, uh, uh, you know, we have on Passive TV, it's live, okay? So. You made a good point, Ash. If you really look back in the history, if you study history, I think it's very interesting. We've never really fixed anything. If you think about it, what have we fixed? We still have racism in 2022. We still have hate. We still have poverty. That, yeah, poverty. I mean, it's connected all, but you got something that's that says, hey, we're going to do something about it. Um, Crime, wars. <laughs> just started this year yeah it's horrible if you think about it what have we done what have we accomplished in the since the beginning i think we made it worse so it's time to make it better yeah yeah think of <laughs> uh 
think of 1969 if you were in Cape Canaveral, like in Florida, and witnessing, you know, Neil Armstrong and his buddy going up to the moon. And that day they confirmed from there, if you would have been there thinking, wow, I wonder like 2022, where would be, you know, the humanity? If we are now here, can you imagine 50, 60 years down the road? Imagine. 2022 is going to be unbelievable. Yeah, now, if we flip the picture, bring one person now and look back, is they they were better off. Hey, give me your idea of what you said the other day about how we're going to change the shape of the earth or the face of this. Give me one example that's really going to make everyone, you know, think about it more. So the word is literally so three words on passive will reshape the planet or earth, however you define it. Literally, the word is physically and literally, physically. Physically meaning, you know how you look at it, like look out from above? It's an, a beautiful, sparkling, marvelous ball that is green and blue. That will change. From the products that we invented, I wouldn't say it and just have a crazy idea. They're not necessarily digital products. That's what I want to be clear because I've heard the, the recaps, okay? So just want to take advantage on and clarify that uh, the restructure and the betterment of Earth as a planet, it will be visible, noticeable with the naked eye and from, you know, scientific measures as well. And it's because of a direct cause or of the impassive inventions. It's very simple, it's not complicated, it's not genius. Thank you. And I'm not talking about a paint, okay? The real earth, okay. That would be fun. And I'm not aiming to rearrange the planets. I'm not going to get into that business, okay? Or but repaint them. <laughs> repaint them. <laughs> I don't like Jupiter. It should be more green, yeah. <laughs> oh, man, now you're making me really think here. But, hey, I know we just had some hands up. Uh, you and Willow and Marty. Willow? Uh, I'm sure Ash has got a couple minutes, but he's going to have to tell me or I got to kick him out because I know he's, he's busy, busy tonight. But Willow, go ahead. You I'm know, taking, I, taking I, a break from my Indian people. I was just... I <laughs> was Don't just tell them thinking. Rupa, okay? The other night, you know, when we had that darling man, Mark, on, he opened our hearts so much. Everybody wanted to help. Everybody that was in the room wanted to make sure that somehow he knew we loved him. What if we created- Who are you talking about, Willow? Mark. Um, oh yeah, I, I missed that, okay. You know, is it, could it be possible that we just need to see somebody that does need it, have it put in front of our eyes? Because a lot of people will say, yeah, I'll help, I'll help, I'll help, I'll help. What if we created a list somehow of special people we knew that were in tremendous need? They don't necessarily have to be homeless. And then when somebody says, okay, I'll donate one of my positions to help this person, you know, could we do something like that to open their eyes that the need is bigger than the people that are trying to help? Yes, but. I know that when I was helping with um, the community and with women that were abused, and some of the women had no homes to go to, they were in crisis, the crisis center, 
they had three or four little kids. And we would get together and we'd put their names in a basket between all of us. And we would ask people, okay, we need a thousand or eleven hundred to rent the apartment to get them in it. And then we needed another thousand for this. So we were really doing our own crowdfunding, but it worked because they had a face that they could put on their need to help, if that makes any sense. And so when I saw Mark the other night, I was thinking, you know, I wanted to help the, the, the reservations. I wanted to give the boys and girls their computers so they could compete in the real world and all of that. But then I seen Mark and if I just had one one other desire in life is I just had enough to give to everybody I want to give to. But there are people out there that I think need the face to see. Even if somebody like, say, Lily had a special person in mind, she didn't have to give her name. She can come on and say, I've got somebody that really needs help. Anybody that wants to volunteer, email me. And we can do something for them, maybe create a, a reseller position like Mr. Ash is saying, just one, just one. But I think we kind of need to bring us all together to show that we are going to make a difference and we can make a difference one little human at a time. And so that's all I wanted to say. I mean, I know I'm a Pollyanna and I can't help it. I was <laughs> born that way. But I think that if you know the starfish most, story, uh, the, the little boy and the uh, wise man walking by, down the beach, and uh, they saw a bunch of uh, thousands, tens of thousands of starfish on the, oh, yeah. on the shore. You know the story, right? Yeah. Oh, man, they're, they're going to die. Okay. And then the wise man told the younger boy that, uh, well... Why you say so? So he just took one, threw it back to the water, and it lived. It survived. Okay? And he said, yeah, yeah, but that's one. You know, there's so many, you're not going to fix them. He said, you do one, I do one. But I saved one. What? They what? both got in action, so they got a bunch. Then a current came and took them all back at once. So if you start with one, don't look like we have too many. We have a billion. Or we have 800,000 that, you know, suffering starvation and somewhat uh, poverty. It's, it's really not complicated. One, one billion of us look out for one person. And, nice. you know, even, even we don't have to be one billion uh, because uh, one million can take care of, you know, a few. But then we're going to inspire exactly what I said about India. We're going to inspire. You're going to inspire one more. The person that you bring in, they are actually going to be more motivated to bring yes. another one. And we're all going to go to the top, period. So the one billion becomes at the top of this global population. And then uh, it will be fun. The good news about that, with the irony of, of everything, okay, I have a feeling they're going to be Almost everyone on planet, not everyone, but almost everyone on planet Earth would have a user on passive. Okay? If that's the case, those 1 billion, they're going to be in, at some point, they're going to be in the business. And the top 1 billion now, the top most, you know, prosperous and wealthiest people now, the top 1 billion, they're going to be on, on, on passive. So the, it's only the matter of the arrangement because either you're going to be the leader or the follower, one of the two, okay? So if we choose to be the leaders and bring those 1 billion as leaders, they're going to have the biggest, wealthiest people below them. Exactly. Following them. I just love it. I, do I know it's crazy. I love you. But, but it's, <laughs> thank you. Yeah, so those wealthy, crazy, greedy uh, individuals we can come after them from the top. They're going to be in our business. They afford the business, no problem. But why don't we take care of the little guy first? 
I'm for it. All right. I first so Mark can sponsor Elon Musk. <laughs> Do you know what? Have you talked to Mark? No, I have no oh, idea if I know him. But... Jeannie, is he here tonight? Hey, he's not here. Well, uh, let, let's, uh, I, let me, uh, if I can, I know Mark's battery is getting low. Ash, if you wouldn't mind, I'd like to introduce you to Mark. Who's battery? Mark. Mark is. Uh, oh, okay. He's our new founder, but. Jeannie... Not his heart battery, right? His yeah, no, no, no. device he's, battery. Hey, That's easy. Ash, no problem. Ash, we can give him a heart. battery. He's got a heart and mind just like yours. Mark, if you could please unmute yourself. Gene, Olivia actually connected with this gentleman. He's a really phenomenal. Mark, you want to, Rupa will get to you and Nathaniel will get to you, but Mark, can you please unmute yourself? Namaste, Ash. Namaste. First of all, how are you, Mr. Ash? I'm fired up. You see me? I don't run out of battery ever. Thank you so much. Happy Ramadan for you. <laughs> Thank you. Welcome. So uh, we are very happy with you, Mr. Ash. I uh, first of all, I am salute your business thinking. On passive, I am don't understand, but I understand something on passive business. But my I right now I feel this is a huge business and oh blessed by very 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 provide product. So every moment. I will enjoy this um, business. So I uh, first, uh, first, first time I will talk to you. So slightly I am nervous as, so apologies me, but I will enjoy and always I, um, we are with you. You are go Thank ahead you. as. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Rupa. I know you've been dying to talk to Mr. Ash. Mark? I apologize, Mark. Can you please unmute yourself? Gene, did you text him? No. We have to smuggle I, battery to you. Where are you, Mark? We're looking for you. He, yeah, he is there. Are you able to unmute him for? Yes, I asked him to unmute, but he hasn't replied yet. Mark, we're waiting. He's such a darling. He, you know what, Jeannie, is he outside a building? I see where he's not getting Where reception. does he live? Where is he in the States? Where? Pennsylvania. In I he's, in, he's in Pennsylvania and he, Pennsylvania. Is, he's, he, is, he is outside. He's in, um, in a safe place. Very good. Um, so no battery? battery? I'm trying, I'm, I'm trying to reach him. Battery is beeping. Could everyone please could could everyone mute your your mic really quick and try to figure out where is that noise coming out from? Okay. I Hold on. Is this a good ratio? It's still there. As India. I think that was advocate Jaspel that was creating the noise. Yes, but there's the beeping still going on. I see. I'll mute right. myself and let's give it, let's give it a minute. To yeah, out. there's some humming. I agree with you, Julie. Yeah. I, I think it's Julie. I think it is Julie. <laughs> Do you have Mark? the washer going on or the dryer? Hey, Mark, are you still on the Zoom? Uh, do you want to unmute yourself and speak to Ash? He's here, the CEO. Come on, I believe. He's going to unmute. Thank you, Jean. Mark, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Hi. Do you have Hi. enough battery to talk to, to the CEO? Yes. Excellent. Hey, Mark. How's it going? Fantastic. 
I heard so much about you. My name is Ash. Very good to connect with you. I know you're in Pennsylvania. Yes, I am. All right. So are you going to run out of battery anytime soon, or do you have a few minutes to talk? I have, I have time to talk. I have battery power. Fantastic. We just want to get to know you. I heard like wonderful things about you. Everybody's bragging about you. If Willow wasn't married or something, she would propose to you right now. Okay. But uh, so what's, what's the deal? What you got going on? Um, I'm homeless right now and I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, uh, I've got um for how long you've know, you been homeless? I can do so many eleven eleven months. I, I, I can do so many great things on earth. Um and uh uh I just have um I have to go do it and I've got I've got um you know I've Asperger's and People doubted me and said I can't do things, you know, that um, other people do my whole life. And I, uh, I. How I, old are you now, I, Mark? I'm uh, tomorrow. I'm gonna be 31 years old. Tomorrow. Yeah. Like, like in 20 minutes, the 27th. Yes. Happy birthday! Wow! Yeah. Did you know and, that, everybody? It's a birthday party. Wow. We can drink water at least virtually. Mark, I was homeless for longer than 11 months, so no big deal. I, um, the, the, the weather is good and, um, I, I, uh, I'm doing okay. I, I'm be, you know, listening to music and I'm, you know, I'm a positive guy, so I'm still positive, and I, I know things are gonna get better for me, and I'm gonna do great things, and um, you, you, on on Earth, and um, you know, I've I've learned so many things about about different kinds of things. I've learned a lot about different kinds of things, like in the 31 years of my life so far, like. Um, you know, um, and and it just happened to be at places that I didn't think I'd be at, and and be around things that I didn't think I'd be around, and then I kind of like just learned from, you know, from what I, what's going on there, like what I what I see there, and I, I learned from, you know, um, like just from like watching. Um, watching things like when I see other people do things that are, you know, I, I learned, I learned from like, like I can, I can just say like, if they can do that, I can do it and I can do it better. And like, all I have to do is see some, somebody doing something that's good or to see somebody doing something the right way. And I can just, you know how yeah. some people are broke mentally. It doesn't look like you are one of those. So you feel that you're, you're solid, you know, mentally, your mindset seems to be in the right place. I have two quick questions for you, Mark, if you don't mind, because just in case we, uh, we, we lose connection or something. Uh, number one, uh, are you, tell me a little bit about your health and, you know, physical condition. And secondly, what put you in this uh, situation? Uh, well, right now my physical and mental health is good. I, I, um, I, I how do good? Things, I do. It's it's real good. I I do things for myself um, that that make my health good. And you you're fully um, functional. Oh yeah. Oh okay. yeah. Fantastic. Like, like, uh, have have think, you made babies yet? No. <laughs> you think you can make babies? I think so. You're very functional then. What else? Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. So well, that's I, Chuck. 
Now tell me about what put you there. Hamas. Yeah. Everything. Um, it just was it. I was living at my parents' house, and I got older. I'm 31 years old. They. So you chose old. to leave. Well, they're older. It, it's hard to live in a house with my parents when I'm when when everything's older. You know, it's you know the you know it's like it it just it's like the house the house is just not a good environment. For did me. they ask you to leave? No. Uh, did you have a plan to leave, or you just left? No plan um, B. I, you I left. Uh, How are you going to survive? You had a roof before. I left because it wasn't really good for my health to live in the house. There's no washer, no dryer, no transportation to anywhere where I can get food and wash my clothes. The shower was broken. And um, and, and where you stay now? Uh, right now, I'm sitting next to a stream, uh, you know, in, in the trees and. Um, but how do you wash and all of that? You, you know, uh, so is it the, any better? Use the creek, use the creek and uh, uh, to stay clean and, um, you know, you'll eat food, walk to the store. There's a food store nearby and uh, you need cash. So when was the last job you've had? Have you worked in your life? Oh, yeah, I've had three jobs. Um, the last job I had was at a gas station. When was, was gas, that? It was a gas station as an overnight manager in 2021. Um, I, I I rang the customers, the cleaned, uh, yeah. uh, did everything. He had a Clerk, whole checklist. Yeah, that's good. Uh, before that, I worked at, at a produce produce stand selling fruit and vegetables, mm. and uh, you know. Full time, my boss said that he was that he had. Wished Have that he you had worked time. in the last eleven months? Um, no, but I can. Any work. source of income? Uh, I have SSI. It's Social Security money. Oh, you have Social Security. Okay. Yes. What What qualifies you for Social Security? Um, the Aspergers. And uh, have you tried to get a job in the last 11 months? Um, it, I, I, I haven't. Uh, I mean, if, if I, but, you know, it, 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 when, I, when I'm not getting sleep, it's, it's, it's kind of, it's kind of hard to, to work on zero sleep, you know? Like I do better and at, at work, I do a better job at work so I can do the, the work right and do a real good job. But when I get of course. sleep and uh, you're not getting sleep, I was the same way when I was in school. Like I, I always did better on tests and did better. in the, on Are the you getting enough sleep and uh, nutrition these days? Uh, I, I think that um, nutrition, yes. Uh Nutrition, yes. Uh, sleep, it's a lot better. I, I've modified, like I've, I've, ch I've changed what I'm, I've changed how I've, how I've, how I'm doing the homelessness that that allow, uh, so that I'm, I'm, I'm doing the homelessness a little bit different than I was when I started, when I became homeless. So now I'm doing the, I'm doing this a different way so that I, I'm actually able to get some sleep and. Like I could work now. If I Where did you stay time. during the snow times, last few months? Uh, during the snow, I um, I uh, I was on the sidewalk and and uh, I just had to do it with like five blankets and you know three heavy thick coats, like you know lots of like warm coats and and sweatshirts and blankets and um, you know stay inside of a sleeping bag and and uh like a really really thick heavy sleeping bag and um i made it through the winter do you consider yourself healthy yes do you consider yourself young yes i, I could i could run i could run 500 yards at like the speed of light and 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 and, and not feel tired so what's i mean 
it's very obvious that you keep yourself positive. How do you do that? I listen to music and music. And, and, and it sounds so good that it, it makes me feel like I can do anything on earth. I thought you listened to Mari de Garmo. Mm, I'm sorry. Okay, which which music do you listen to? Uh, band music, a, a lot of trumpets, uh, brass instrument music. On the um, phone? Yes. Uh, I like to listen to brass quintets, uh, uh, brass groups, um, guys that get together, people that get together and play brass instruments, uh, music on brass instruments, trumpets, slides, trombones, uh, tubas, baritones. Um, and and uh, I, I uh, you know, any kind of trumpet music, brass. I also, I also like to listen to music, soundtracks from movies like Star Wars, the Star Wars 9 soundtracks. Star Trek soundtrack, um, you know, some movies have good music in them, but mostly I like to just listen to brass instrument music, like I was saying, like trumpets. Um, and, Mark, and do you know there are 315 uh, founders right now listening to you from the Unpassive yeah. on Zoom yeah. alone, and it's being yeah. live streams on multiple uh, YouTube channels, and others are going to play it back sometime in the future, tonight, tomorrow. Yeah. Okay, so... It's safe to say that thousands of people are either listening to you or will at some point listen to this. Okay. I I don't know if you feel this way. Do you feel like we're family to you on Passive Founders? You feel yes. comfortable with us to talk? Okay. So would you share with us what's your plan as your family? You got um, the brain. You got the, 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 the physicality. You got the... Uh, you're young. You're a baby. You're a kid. I'm gonna find a place to live. I'm gonna find. Uh, uh, I'm Which gonna one find is it. first, the chicken or the egg? You find the job first or place to live? Well, I mean, I think I think I think I'll take anything I can find. Whatever I find first, you know, yes. something is better than than nothing. Um, what I, you know. I, the first thing I find, I'll take. If it's a job, I'll take it. If, uh, sure. if it's a place to live, I'll take it. What about the gas station? They wouldn't hire you anymore, or they got somebody. Um. Well, at at the time, at the time, you know, it, things were a little bit different back then. Like, like you know, he had he had an employee that was was a criminal and was committing crimes and. Um, just wasn't working like with like I couldn't I work see. with him and yeah we and, don't need and, to get there. Mark, and, what and, what and do I, you feel about your situation? Do you feel sadness? Do you feel sorry for uh, the way your life is now? Or like I, I wonder how you feel. No, I, I feel positive. Like I feel I feel good about things because like I know that I can do great things and i know i will do great things i know i'll find a place to live i'll know i'll find a job and, I, and I'm, I'm going to so i feel good about things i feel positive about things and i know it's going to get better it will i mean i don't see you missing anything just just go get a job get a job like anything like you said just to survive uh there's some uh good business owners doesn't have to be a corporate uh small shop here or there just just when they see you they see if you're determined or you're in need for it they give you a chance i've seen those people every every job i've had before my boss has always told me that uh that i that 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 he wished he had more employees like me and and uh that I'd do a good job and that, that they want me to stay with them for a lot of time like you know like you know don't get a different job somewhere else just stay with stay work keep working here for me because like you do a good job and um, yeah I think that you know you, you know I, th I think that I can do uh, great things on earth at any time, like I can, I can just really just like, um, I, I, I can, uh, 
I can do some pretty great things. Um, and, uh, like, you think you'll be a musician one day? I think I will. I think I could be the next Bach or Beethoven or like Stravinsky, one of those guys who writes, wrote music that, that that's really good music that a lot of people know about. Like, I, my, my mother used, my mother taught music and played music her, her whole life when she, when I was growing up, when I was younger, I learned a lot about it before I even got to school. Once I got to school, I, I, I did uh, music for, for uh, nine years uh, in school. And then, um, you know, once I graduated high school, I, I never went to a university because uh, I never had the money to go to a university, but I, 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 I just kept listening to music and um you know what you know, instruments do you play i can play the trumpet i've never played a slide trombone but i i could i know i can play it it wouldn't take me much time to learn it, it just you know i can play i could i can play the piano i can i could i can play a mellophone a, a, i can play a baritone without even i have a two-year-old he plays the trumpet too and a harmonica i like the harmonica it sounds good I, um, I, I, um, he's not professional I, by, by all means. He's just music, it's a music, hobby. music, I think is good. Like it, it, I think it can make anybody's day better. Like when people hear music and it sounds good, I don't mean music that does not sound good. I'm talking about like music. When people hear music that sounds good and it sounds real good. I think that it can make people's days better, you know, like if it if it's real good music and it, it sounds real good, you know, and um, you know, like somebody that's practiced, like practice practice practicing makes people good at things. Like the more you do something, the better you are at it. And what attracted uh, you to unpassive? Huh? What uh, got you into uh, into unpassive? Okay, I, I was talking with Gene about on passive and and uh, you know I I think differently about things on Earth and I like how on passive thinks differently about things and does things different and there are like people on Earth don't most people well people on Earth don't really you know they don't like different they not I, I mean when I say they don't like different. It, mm -hmm. Like a lot of people think that things that are different, people that think differently and do things differently, you know, people think that, that that's wrong. People think that's bad. People think that that's not how things should be is like different. But like, but like that's not that's not right. Like different things are good. Like and different things, uh, you know, you know people that do different things it's like that's a good thing and like people that think differently is a good thing because like like people in the history of the united states of america and people in the history of the world like in that when i was in school and text in textbooks there's people who i read about in in, in the textbooks when i was in school that that did great things amelia Earhart, uh Lindbergh, like these people who flew airplanes uh thomas edison uh albert einstein uh uh um martin luther king jr like they did all these things things that were different but like really good things and um you know you know people saw like how how good those things were in the end like when at first they people might not have really like known like or understood why they're doing something different in the beginning, but like, but like in the end, they're like, wow, that person did really good things that were great things. And, um, and then now, now their names are in textbooks and like, I want to be one of those people. And, you know, people would be like, okay, this guy, Mark Gladfather did. Mark Gladfather did. All these if you believe things. you will make a big impact, like in which area do you think you will make oh, it? Yeah. science, oh, yeah. uh, biology? I don't care if people call me crazy. Like I, I, I think I can change the world, and I and I'm going to. 
and 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 that's what like people said about we lost to mark and he's still unmuted i don't know if uh yeah did you ever meet with him uh gene or any other founder Yes, he's completely changed my life in the week that I've known You've him. Seen him directly? Uh, yes, I um I met him. He was sitting outside a store that I was going into. I said hello, and then I finished my shopping and came out. He was still sitting there, and I don't recall exactly what I said to him, but um, we struck up a conversation. I probably asked if there was anything he needed, and then I just he started talking, and I listened. And it was like three and a half, four hours later, I was late for the round table. He just poured out. It just, it just, I just listened. And um, how did he appear then, to you from the first, you know, uh, sight like crazy or? Uh, uh, no. Um, hungry to, to show his potential. What did you feel? Intense and um, no eye contact. Um, so I wasn't sure what to make of me. And uh, so let's take advantage while he's reconnecting on a scale one to ten. They want to say how ugly, but how handsome was he? Like, you know, uh, what do you give him? One to ten. I would say very handsome. OK, so he's like eight, seven. Oh, I hate doing that. I'm not going to do that. I think he's a oh, handsome I'm, I'm... man. <laughs> I do. He could be my son. Though, so let's not go there. So. so so he's handsome, he's young, he's ambitious, he's positive, he's super young. I, I don't know what's missing. Well, the, the Asperger has, Asperger's has caused some challenges. That, that has, not everybody is, um, when you talk to, to Mark for long periods of time, you start to see where um, there are, when his mind is working on something, some people will understand that and some people will not. Some people won't have the patience. So um, all I can say is that I, I have, I've met with him multiple times. I he cherish him. He seems to him. be good to go. Like he I cherish him as a friend. I, I talk to him for hours and hours. And I, you know, it's like there isn't enough time for us to talk about things. He's got so much, so many ideas, Ash. And I actually told him today, I said, I'm not, I can't guarantee, but it's possible you might be able to talk with the CEO because I think you guys think you're, you have creative ideas. He has ideas about space. He has ideas about so many things, Ash. Uh, he is, and he's but just I, raring I, I to go. I feel his passion about music for sure. Yeah, there's something about and music nutrition. that he lights yeah. up, yeah. So I got him a trumpet, I, you know, so I'm you getting did. it serviced. Wow. I did, I'm, I'm getting it serviced. So, and, and he, you know, it's not serviced yet, but I got to hear him play. So even on a trumpet that needs to be uh, repaired, he, um, he made some beautiful music come out of that thing and he hasn't played in a while. So he's really talented and uh, um, I just, he's a cherished friend. Does he and, ask for um, anything? I, I will ask him and he will tell me and I go get it. And um, no, no. Does so, he ask like for a help or for anything like for, does he? In, like, what Not, does he wish to have? He, like, um, well, I think he, he doesn't I, seem to be defeated by his situation. It's not like he's he's, no. he's mentally like it's it's a temporary situation. I'll be okay. I tell you what, though, the conversation from the very beginning to now has been a transition. Mm. So I think just having someone to talk with for long periods of time. It's, it's like a healing. It is literally like a healing where you, you can get through some of the things that have not, you know, it's like, it's like hope, <clears throat> hope begins to take root, you know, because he's been in a system where, you know, he's, he's gone and tried to get a bed and tried to, to um, work with community services. And it just hasn't worked out for him, whether it was, you know, they didn't have room or any number of things. Um, so you start to get, you, you just give up on the system. And what he, what he does, like he doesn't give up on himself. He's like, um, I'm, you know, I'm just going to do sounds it like myself. Sounds like a winner to me. Yeah. Sounds oh, like he's, a winner. he's a major, major he's, winner. He's, probably he's a beautiful a, a human fun. being. When did he uh, become a founder? Uh, officially? 
Well, I told him the, like the first day I was like, you have, you are founder material. I mean, we talked about it. Uh, um, and so I gifted him a, a position. So he is officially in the system as a founder. And then Mike uh, gifted him three positions. So tomorrow night, the three of us are going to get together and walk through uh, getting those. So he, he just and, and became he, a founder. You, just a couple days ago. Yeah. Yes, on in his this, in the system. thirty first birthday. Yeah, it's, yeah, a little a little present. <laughs> so Fantastic. Um, wow, it's amazing. Yeah, and he and he understands it, and he's today. He's like, what What else can I do? Am I like? Are there more videos I should be watching? What else? I said, well, you know what? There's this, this, and this. You could watch videos um, and webinars twenty four seven. Um, yeah. And I said, but you know, you could go in and read the ebook. You could go, you can watch the YouTube videos of the leaders. He is earnest. He is asking what he can do. What can I do to contribute? Um, I, he's a, a phenomenal human being. Oh, definitely like, inspiring. Yes. Very. Yeah. I mean. You two are going to have conversations. I, on, on I pulled topics. out all I needed to know. He's handsome, healthy, <laughs> young. Okay. Mentally positive. Like I have no idea. This guy could be anything. So he's not missing it. Mm -hmm. He's. He's into, you know, the good stuff and seems to be uh, knowledgeable or well-educated. He doesn't run out of topics. So uh, before you make a decision, Chris Johnson, and uh, never invite me again, okay? Uh, just, just to show you the number. We're going to run some numbers, okay? Math. And uh, when I came here, it was 170 people. Now close to 400, okay? And there are a few YouTube channel are open. All right, so I'm not damaging your business, okay? I'm not crashing your body. <laughs> what it was is we invited everyone to sing Mark Happy Birthday at midnight, I think. I can't give you all the credit for that one now, come on. Mark, are wow, you still with timing. us? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I've been searching for him and he's not in yet. Oh, no, I, I think his battery died. Uh, Ash, listen, it's, I know it's after midnight. I know you got work to do. These people got to probably go to work in the morning. Some of them, I appreciate you, brother, for coming on here and uh, picking us all up because you seem to do that real good. I'm trying to learn from you. I'm getting a little better at it, but Joyce Hicks, thank you for coming on and speaking your words of wisdom. It's all the doctors and the people's opinions. Uh, Lynn Nakamoto, love you, my sister. For helping out with the with the coast and the advertising, Julie Wen, thank you for putting all the stuff in the back office and helping out with your wonderful words. Peter Shore, my brother, always because Pete and I are a partner for life. Marty DeGarmo and everyone else that spoke on here. Ash Mafara, you got the last word, and then we are out of here. Well, thank you, Jim, for bringing Mark. It was nice to connect with him. I. Uh... My pleasure. Uh, thank you also for mentioning him again, Willow and everyone. It was a treat. Okay. I I heard all the buzz, Mark, 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 Mark. Who's Mark? Okay. So I got to at least listen to him. I didn't visually see him, but that's good enough. We trust uh, uh, Gene's, uh, you know, uh, description. He's, he's, a, he's a good, perfect fella. I mean, I don't know what's, what's missing. Uh, and I'm um, glad you brought him in. Uh, hopefully we will be able to add value, but he's an inspiration for sure. You know, he's not broken mentally. He's totally fine. In fact, he could enlighten some of us. Yeah. So thank you, everybody. I don't know if uh, Leon was going to say something. Uh, Rupa, was good to hear you. Uh, you know, just, just, uh, you know, we are real people. You don't have to, yeah. Uh, it's more important to listen to other people than me sometimes, yeah. So, uh, but uh, we are here when, when it's possible. Tomorrow is going to be on Passive 360. And I'm told they're going to go over the, uh, what's supposed to be round round table recap, I guess. My, okay. Uh, so that's interesting. Uh, why don't we post it there? It just, it, it's a good source of information. Like, you know, it's, it's totally, uh, but I don't want to create a, an era of uh, self-promoting 
uh, it's an exception 360 it's for everybody they don't promote anything on it um, other than just you know giving the the information liana i've been wanting to connect with you i don't know uh, when you had the event in california julie did you tell him uh okay okay i'm here so i i i know that you guys want to close and i came on kind of late because i had some power power outage but uh uh, yeah, it's been pretty interesting. I've been so excited since yesterday we on the meeting that you were on yesterday, and I've been having so many com conversation discussion. And Julie and I, it's just like we live next door, even though she lives seventy five miles south of LA and I live seventy five miles north of LA. <laughs> you know, we've had several discussions, and so there's so many things I wanted to to say about yesterday, but and then also about old bless and. I thought about these things because oh bless is one of those situations where I, I if we had a um, if we had a, um, a form just like the guy Mark was on there's so many different levels of poverty we had a form and then that we can categorize people because some people I know that lives that uh, homeless they living in their cars but they have jobs they just have bad credit they can't get apartment. They made some mistakes. Those are one category. You got some people who I know a guy that lived for 32 years. He slept on the street. I saw him every single year for 32 years on Western Avenue in L.A. But after the COVID, I didn't see him anymore. But he lived in the same place. That particular guy, I don't think you could have pulled him off of that street corner where he lived. And some people want to live, want to be off the street. So you gotta have all these different categories. Some people just want clean drinking water and you gotta be able to categorize all of these people. And if we can build that form, cause we have so many people on um, passive that have so many different backgrounds. And then once we get all these forms and get everybody categorized where then we could put them all into groups and people can volunteer which group they wanna work on. I heard a guy say he knows about logistics. He has a lot. He knows a lot about logistics and see he, that guy is the guy that needs to be working with groups for logistics. And, and, uh, I, I know some people who out there on the streets are educated, have PhDs and have all kinds of, they just ran into some bad luck. Some people have substance abuse problems that ran into bad luck and you have so many different areas. And I just look at that. I get so excited when I see so many different possibilities by putting these forms together and by uh, once, and then we build a blueprint from the, build the boilerplate blueprint on how we can tackle homelessness and tackle uh, poverty and tackle feeding people once we categorize and then and pass that through some of the uh, uh, mental health specialists and see, or you know, let, let them bless our list and stuff like that and making sure we're working from the right direction because everybody seems to think that you have to make sure we know what people need first and once we make sure what people need and then we can actually go from there and uh and yesterday you mentioned something and it's all about infrastructure like unpassive have many different infrastructures built into unpassive and julie and i was talking about it and i i'm so in depth in the infrastructure business because I've done it for 27, almost 30 years just for dealing, building infrastructure. For example, if you build a wastewater treatment plant, you can't build a treatment plant for the population. You got to build it for expected population growth, just like on passive. We can't build Odesk for what we think. We got to build Odesk for bigger because if you don't build it for bigger, if once we once uh, um, once we start, once everything starts, they'll fail you because they're not big enough. And we have, I think, uh, on passive is, is it have so many different possibilities, and the infrastructure has to be correct. It's just like if you size a pipeline to hold a million gallons and you get ten million gallons, you're going to have failure because the water going to back up. And you're not going to have the pumps to move the water, just like uh, on passive. And I like what you said. We're not in no hurry. We got to build it right. We got the system on passive. Got to be built correct because once I'm not that we don't want to assume. Just, just I'm sorry for that. Not that we don't want to assume, but 
but which which one is the priority? Doing it right or doing it fast? Doing it right. Doing it right. Got to be done right. And uh, I, 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 I was talking to Julie. I said, "You're such a genius in 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 in, in leadership and infrastructure." Julie, Leon said, "You're so just a genius, like pure genius." He just said and, that. Yeah, just pure genius because <laughs> you thinking way outside the box. I mean, you thinking way ahead. You can't rush things. You gotta you gotta build it. If you build a school. For 25 people and 100 show up, you fail because you got to make sure you have scalable, scalable schools yes. and everything <laughs> has to be scalable. Yeah. And that's what I, I, I like about yesterday. And I've been so excited engaging people all day today and, and yesterday. And Julie and I talked last night. And like I said, it's all about the leadership and how important it is. And, and, that's, and, and I just want to let everybody on this call know I am so blessed to be working with Julie because Julie, she's the, such a best leader when she told me and she le led me and we start communicating, you know, and, and she helped uh, open my eyes to a lot of things. And I, and I just kept growing and growing and growing and all because I had her as my leader. And if we had every leader and a lot of people, I see the same traits online, Mr. Charles Lasson and, and Mike William, they, 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 these, and everybody else, um, that people that I'm not even mentioning name, Marty, of course, and, yeah. and Red, Redford, you know, it's a people, big list. Yeah. It's a big list. And we have the right infra infrastructure. Anything can go. Anything. Do you have connections with uh, Chris Johnson? Yeah. I don't have it, but yeah, Chris Johnson, I, he, I watch him talk all the time and, and I'm watching him and just people like this, like that and we we can uh we can move the world we can move we can move mountains because because i mean I, connections I, like influence like i'm i'm trying to get a bribe with him because yeah just in case <laughs> yes yeah he's I'm, I'm talking so to somebody at the moment making a decision how do we ban ash from future conferences just in case <laughs> you can talk him out of it tell him look at the numbers chris and reconsider okay yeah okay <laughs> and we have so many like-minded people i don't think anything i think everything is possible anything possible everything is possible because no doubt so like-minded people and i always remember what you always said a long time ago bigger the team bigger the dream bigger the dream bigger the team and yep. we and we have all of that and but and also like, you have to understand it's not just not not just dreaming taking action is the, the key is is the key uh, the, the distinguished difference between uh, those who make it and those who are just, you know, uh, they're just delusional. So uh, I do believe that uh, once you have the plan and the dream, it's just all about action. So we took unlimited action. We just opened it all the way. And uh, I do believe for to get where you want to go, you have to pay, pay a price. OK, yeah. it's not going to yeah. come handed to you. So and and it's said it's been said that um, pay now, play later. Yeah. Or play now and keep wishing, but you will pay later. One of the two. The so that's why I was talking, trying to, to understand Mark. Like he's he's got to be pushed a little bit more on getting a job, Gene. I don't know how. Or when did you meet him? April eighteenth. This what? year. Yeah, just a week ago. Okay. All right. So uh, I wonder if he had like COVID like in the last 11 months or something. Yeah. I don't know. He's extremely health conscious. Very, yeah, very like picky about his nutrition and his food. Uh, drinks a lot of water. Um, yeah. He's very, very. Um, Does he look 31? And I'm sorry, I'm not talking physicality. I'm just like, you, you, sometimes I have uh, asked, okay. Does he, because his voice age. sounded he, his voice is, is older than 31, his voice. Well, okay? he, was, he was really tired tonight. Yeah, that's I think he what had I was going to ask. I think he had, a, yes, he had a hard day today. So, so he's, I th he's he a little bit more He started to fall upbeat. asleep, yeah. Okay. Yeah, he, yeah, he, yeah, because we, he and I talked for hours earlier. But he, he was, was picking up more energy things. as we went on. Yeah, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, uh, but, um, yeah, I think he, you know, like, 
it's, it's sort of like if you if you cleaned him up, you know, scrubbed him. <laughs> you know, he has a, a short, uh, dark hair, short beard. Um, so he does keep his beard trimmed and whatnot, yeah. and uh, dark hair. But I I did notice that his his skin is almost translucent. Like he he's definitely healthy. You know what I mean? Like where you can tell wow. on people's skin. So I think it's just you know if he had a place where he's showering regularly and, and, ha and he kept saying, if I had a kitchen, I'd be making smoothies for everyone. You know but what I mean? Nothing, like he, he, nothing should stop him from, I mean, he, he, mm -hmm. he can get a job like rather quickly, any job to survive and then yeah. start giving, you know, some classes from any place. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. even outdoors trumpet or nutrition, music, something. Okay. Mm -hmm. He will make a living. Full yeah. time on Academy plus his Ab you know, absolutely paid job. He has agreed he has to do lives. Maker. Yeah. Yeah. He has agreed to do some lives. So we'll see how that goes. Um, but he he wants to talk to the world. You heard him a little bit. He he yeah. he wants to do great things. So it's just a matter of, of mm. you know giving him the vehicle. Um, so yeah, it was just Do you think the state location wise has to do because it's like he said he we're in Chester County and, and he he said there's yeah. just really not the resources and the support that that he needs um, and whether his dream is to have a place where people with autism and Asperger's um, you know sort of like a, a, a support community where they can get everything that they need in a in a in an environment that's what where Elon Musk has right Elon yes. Musk I don't know yeah, I don't yeah. know but that, that would make sense um, but he you know because he says a lot of people. You know, think he's crazy or they think he has mental problems nah. or they think all these things but I, I mean i know better and i've only known him a week you know what i mean so it's just some people are as he said are not they don't have the patience um and so it's uh, again and i'm still learning i every time i talk to him i learn something more so he is he is deep and wide you know he's got so much to offer but it's a little more complicated than uh, you know, stuff with his family. There's, there's, he's had a rough road in a lot of ways. So he's, he's, he's had to work through some things. So it's not all just, you know, um, it's a little more complicated than he shared. So, um, but he, uh, it just in the time that I've known him, he has blossomed. He really has. I think he just really wanted someone to listen to him, to be honest somebody that would um, listen to him and value him. And he and I have a lot in common, like music. Wow. We were both in marching band. We both were into uh, drum corps, you know, the precision of that. So we talked music, we talked, you know, um, art. I got him some clay because he said he used to, to make sculptures. So I went to the art store and, you know, got him some things that are going to re-inspire him. Um, and I just, I, I just think he just needed someone to be able to um, have no judgment about him. And I just, I, I think he's awesome. <laughs> I just, I, I just want to talk to him all day. I just think he's a, he's a gem, and um, yeah, and he is, I, I he's, he's going to change the world. To move on yeah. to, to uh, yeah. like a practical, like not to take it easy, because you know, thirty one, you got to have a you know stability in life and know where you want to go and yeah. uh, like uh what it says uh your mind will make you rich or poor depending on how you use it put it yeah. uh, so he has a brain just like the way right now it's uh it's you know uh maybe comfort zone or something i'm i'm guessing he need to be pushed in a good way yeah, I feel like, I, I, and the way he has just sort of, you know, um, jumped right into on passive, you know, I, like I just, he doesn't, I think he has a, a photographic memory. He has definitely some like, you know, music. He says he can hear it once and he can play it. Um, yeah. Just in our conversations, he will repeat back things that I've said. And sometimes uh, if he doesn't, if he's not able to finish a thought, like if our phone conversation gets cut short, when we talk next, he will finish the thought. Mm. You know, his mind is incredible. Does so, he know you um, sing? 
Well, I sent some stuff. We were, talking, we were talking about it because he was singing his trumpet parts. And I said, oh, you're a singer, too. I said, I said, you and I are going to sing together. I think he has perfect pitch, too. I think he's just he's got a lot. He's got a lot of talents. And um, so we have a lot in common, a lot of topics that we both enjoy talking about. So we've essentially found a friend in each other that we can talk to about things that maybe we can't talk to anybody else about. You know, some some stuff, the spacey stuff, stuff that you know some people think is goofy. Yeah. But, but Cynthia Brown always comes up with the genius ideas. Okay. Yeah. So uh, just uh, reading what she says in uh, in the chat, uh, like uh, I'm not sure exactly the uh, details, but uh, if that's what she meant, like you know, just suggest the idea of having a free YouTube channel and start engaging and you will start having followers uh perhaps either to uh for on passive or uh for his interest but you know then he's yeah. gonna have following and on passive that's like it doesn't cost anything so leon yeah. do you want to have the last uh, word about yesterday so because i have to take off uh so uh oh. yesterday you you were live or uh i was there way back. I, yeah Yesterday was so so exciting about the infrastructure part and 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 you know I know you was the way you was talking and and I know what you were saying I know exactly what you were saying and I just want I I had other underlying discussion with other founders because I was so excited about what you were saying and 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 I understand infrastructure so you know from that from a from a mechanical engineering perspective versus the uh, technology, like, um, like the uh, IT uh, perspective. But I do know that at infrastructure, it gotta be built to hold whatever you throw at it. And when, and, and that's when you are successful because scaling something and you thinking and, and unpassive is so huge now. And once we take off, we're going to, we don't have time to slow down once we take off to go back and fix something. So it, it, like I say, if, the, if you build it, they'll come. This is one of those situations where they will come and they're going to come fast. And we got, and we can't, we got to have the staff, the staffing, the infrastructure, everything got to be in place. So like you say, do it now or you do it later, but later people are not going to forgive you. You do it now before you put it out there. Yeah, right yeah. now for free. I, I hear you. Yeah, no pressure. Yeah, yeah. little. Okay, thank you. Uh, forgive me, Chris. Okay, I will not come here for the next <laughs> three hours. Guaranteed. Hey. Hey, it's all you. yours. Thank you. Thank you. I thank love you, you all. Very much. Appreciate your time, guys. Good night. I'm sorry I kept you up so late, but it's always worth it. Uh, <laughs> We love you, brothers. We love you, sisters. Thank you. God bless all you. And uh, happy birthday, Mark. Uh, wherever you are, if you can hear us, we don't know, but happy birthday to you. And uh, let's just do this, guys. Daryl Cook, Janet Butler, thank you for all your help also in the background with the notes. Let's do this. Say yes to a bless. And then passive is coming. Woo! Fire yourself up. I just woke up my daughter. All right, guys. Uh, Marty, don't do that to me every time. <laughs> Ask, will you tell him to stop picking on me <laughs> all right guys marty marty just shut the button off will you happy birthday to good night you. everybody happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. happy birthday to mark happy, happy, happy birthday to mark happy birthday to mark Happy birthday, Happy birthday, Thank you so much for this great webinar. Awesome. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. 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 Th